in the in the basement, the Star Wars basement, and I'm joined this week by Paul. And nice to meet you. I've met you. And the artist, David Kennedy. Hello. You all right? Good afternoon. The artist formerly known as. <laughs> good, good after evening in this beautiful basement of yours. Yes. It's very hot and sticky today. Yeah, I'm hot and sticky anyway. It's, um, we have two temperatures here, freezing cold <laughs> with bubble coats and hats or red hot, and usually Paul's got no clothes on. No pants. Basement rules, mate. So, yeah, putting mushrooms to the wind. Well, mm. he had to make an effort. Look, there's a brand new T-shirt. He's just got it out of the box because <laughs> he's had nothing on all day. <laughs> this is true. We are all bottomless as well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, just makes for a more comfortable situation all round. I think. It's been that way since Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that way you learnt that one. <laughs> yeah. Old bed and pal knows his stuff. He really yeah. does. Be yeah. prepared. <laughs> well, you're supposed to wear shorts camping, aren't you? Because uh, your legs dry out quicker and it's just an extension That's of that. That's it. Don't wear jeans. You're an yeah. idiot if you yeah. wear jeans. Don't wear jeans. God. Don't wear... And then yeah. be, after that, it's like, don't wear shorts. <laughs> don't wear shorts. Why are you wearing shorts? <laughs> Have you brought your creams? Your shorts might I get wet. You've brought your creams. I hope my mum's not watching this. But anyway, <laughs> started. Well, so <laughs> I'm sure Paul's mum's watching some it. chunks on for me. Yeah, I suppose I've got to check out the talent. It's like, like I said, stunt clarky. So, yeah, much better looking. Ears are in the right place. Oh, cheers, yeah. Um, one of them's a little bit... Better vision. <laughs> one of them's a little bit higher than the other one. But it just oh, means... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, the ears. But it just means that if I get attacked from the right, I'm all right, you know. Ah. I'm good at cornering. Just, just <laughs> one way. <laughs> yeah, because Clark has got can weird I, Can I do that Burt Reynolds look, look, to camera got his head, yeah. Look, he's... He's got his. No, he's got his, like his headphones wonky. Yeah, you know, look how he's put his headphones on, cover him up. <laughs> and one's not just and tired. Blueberries in mine. <laughs> he's he's got like one one yeah, spock that, ear that, and that, one yeah. like Sometimes. Yoda ear or something. Yes. But yeah, one of them still is like your ears are about, about situated in the right place. Mark is is one of them is there. You see, right? There's an artist oh, trick, nice. right? Cheers, Paul. There's an artist Ooh. trick, right? He's off. And it's uh, they, used, <laughs> they used to do it back in the old days of like yeah. cartooning and that, where you put a mirror next to what you're drawing, and the idea is it shows up all your mistakes because when whatever hand you favour as you're drawing, you will make mistakes on one side of the face or not, you know. And I, and that's what I believe happened when when I was made. Somebody's drawn me, and they've they've not looked in the mirror, they've not checked whether everything's working. Mm. So one of the ears is higher than the other one. Mm. One eye's a bit bigger, you know, Popeye-esque. It's not, not just for your mum when you was a kid. It could be that. <laughs> the third ear's weird as well. The, one arm's longer than the other and my tail snapped. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, anyway, tack so, on down. <laughs> yeah, but, but I can live with the ears. I can cope with that. What are we here for? <laughs> um, I think we're going to be talking about your art. Oh, yeah. right, there's that as well, isn't there? Well, yeah. we could, could always talk about where you come from as well. Well, we don't want to do that. What? You don't want to stir up no, the elder the gods. You. Your <laughs> <laughs> you, don't want, you don't want that chasing you down the street oh, like the curse of the demon. <laughs> um, yeah, Wigan. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm Wigan. From, from Wigan, yeah. Somebody has to be. Yeah, yeah. There's me, the horse, and the two lads with the feet, and uh, that, that comprises the people of Wigan. There's the world famous Cherry and Whites as well, though, isn't there? What's that? Wigan Warriors. <laughs> Oh, well, there's that. Sport, <laughs> well, sports are realm I don't actually follow. Really? I've tried, oh my God. Um, but it's like a, you know, if you give you like a twenty-sided Rubik cube now, you wouldn't know what to I, do will, with it. Will they let you back into Wigan after this then? Oh, I, I've, because, I've got tunnels. <laughs> That's yeah. the only way I get in and out. Because mm. it's um, rugby league mad there, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, basically, when my parents moved from Liverpool, because there's a bit of scouse in there. <laughs> oh right? my God! And my parents moved over from Liverpool. You, you in could actually be. Like related you to Clarky in some way. Is this when I find out you're my <laughs> nice, nice dad? No, I, I think your your probably is dad. Oh, um, nice way. <laughs> <laughs> he looks well older than you, and his bum's a slang. So anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't mean that. I love you really. <laughs> so coming from the parents coming from Liverpool, right? There was a mass exodus at some point, and they all piled into the the far end of Wigan so everyone I grew up with 
only mates around the corner, primary school, the, the whole area was filled with Scousers. Then we hit secondary school and I met the Wiganers. And I'm like, what is this? It's like the e Eloy and the Morlocks meeting each other. You know, what's this thing here? They're all talking about rugby. They're all talking in a language that doesn't make any goddamn sense. Eating uh, pies. Yeah. I worked with a fella for nine years in BHS on a Saturday with a Wigan accent I still didn't understand <laughs> after those nine years. Yeah, Watched him with a kid once go, onto little, onto poor little mister. I said, what? <laughs> the double Christ have you just said? And he had to break it down. Dust want Apollo little mister. <laughs> <laughs> so you asking that child, does he want a ball? Or why don't you just say, do you want a ball? Mm. So, Wigan. Anyway, so yeah, I'm fr I'm from Wigan, but I am not of Wigan. So as much as I would like to enjoy the sport, as my the rest of my family do, mm -hmm. went down the Star Wars route instead. Bless you. Yeah. I know. You, I realise yeah. people, some people can do both, yeah. but I'm not capable. Yeah. Well, I, um, we was talking off camera earlier as well, but we won't. You, you kidnapped someone from Hungary once, but we can't, I did, yes. we can't bring that up. Yes, a Japanese lady. Yes. Uh, I kidnapped her from Hungary and convinced her Wigan was better than Tokyo. Yeah, I married her. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Produced an offspring that, uh, thank God, doesn't look like me. Um, looks like her, which is great. Yeah. She's a handsome lady. <laughs> and, he's, and he's a pretty lad. <laughs> he gets, he, he does get, oh, isn't she lovely? A lot, because he's got, his mum wants him to have her, like, either... Um, Bill and Ted, Keanu Reeves in Bill oh, and Ted, right, yeah. or John Connor in Terminator 2. So he's never had a tiny fringe. Apart from that time, we took him to a barber, my brother suggested, and my wife won't talk to my brother anymore because he looked like Spock, but a, a, a <laughs> chocolate raisin version of him or something. Like somebody drawn Spock wrong. <coughs> Who's supposed to be talking about my art? <laughs> anyway. Anyway, we're, we're, the, we're going into The that. problem always is, in a scenario such as un unleashing me in these things, I work under my stirs and I don't get out at all. So when you meet a human, as I did with these guys at the um, Star Wars Fan Fun Day, this torrent <coughs> of bile just um, spews it forth. Oh, yeah, for which Bob needs to talk to you oh, okay. about the, um, the body thing later. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah OK. Yeah. yeah, the murder and the kidnap. Yeah. Yeah, we can sort that out. Don't worry about it, yeah. yeah. I'm good at carrying shit. <laughs> Yeah. Carrying shit. Yeah, <laughs> carrying Bob's a lot. <laughs> it, no, it can just go any time. It's getting old now, so All right. you have to be ready. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> like fucking odd job, isn't he? He's just like fucking. Oh, oh, oh. Odd job. Yeah. Odd job. Yeah. The sharp hat. Yeah. No, I think you're more like odd bod. <laughs> Not the carry on movies. Remember, <laughs> eyebrows anyway. So one of the most difficult things on earth is explaining. The carry on movies to a Japanese person. Oh, right. Well, in fact, did I tell you this last time? I was like, oh, I might have no. someone else. I might, talk to, I might talk to someone else. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> so, my wife, um, uh, uh, we were watching uh, Rory McGrath on telly doing something, and he said, uh, This is where um, supposedly Robin Hood passed away. And uh, he said, uh, Somebody bring me my bow and my arrow, and uh, where some ever this arrow to land, that's where I should be buried. So, they buried him in the ceiling. Uh, and and I'm giggling, and my wife's going, "What's this?" I, I said, "Well, he's just told a joke." Like he said, uh, "I don't, I, I, don't, I don't see." And I realised, as much as Japanese people have their own humour and their own comedy, you know, the format of jokes is a very English thing. Like, guy goes to the doctor. It is not a story about a guy going to the doctor. It's the setup for a joke, isn't it? Hmm. And unfortunately, I've got Scouse family, so they just talk in jokes. <laughs> they don't use words. It's all one-liners. My dad just had this meltdown because he couldn't explain a joke. Like, he, he didn't want to go back and give the explanation to Tomo. So it's, it makes you look at your own country and how you handle things when you know somebody from another country and, and you're like, England is weird. We don't know it is, <laughs> but it is. And when, when you get to the carry-on films, <laughs> rice twice. She's struggling with what a one-liner is and I'm saying, watch this. You'll understand England after you've watched this. Carry-on camping. Mm -hmm. Sid and, and Bernard are pull, pulled up, and that you know the one that, where that they, sounds like Paul's weekend. <laughs> you know the one where they they go to a place and they think it's a nudist camp, so that they think mm. they can get their girlfriends to be in the knack, and they pull up on the bus going <coughs> to each other. And I said, "There, that's funny to English people already." She said, "There's nothing there. They've not done anything." I said, "But it's funny already because they're at a knacky camp and they're giggling." <coughs> right? And she says, oh, "I don't get it." Right? So they get there and there's a sign and it says all asses must be shown, right? And uh, they're giggling like this. I said, see, that's funny to English people, and I can't tell you why. And they walk up and they said, is uh, Mr Fiddler here? 
And they say, no, he's uh, he's gone for a pee. I said, there, there's another one. It's funny because he's gone for a pee. And when he comes back, he puts it on the sign. It says, all passes must be shown. And I said, <laughs> that you've had about five or six funny bits there all the way through. That. That's what English people find funny. She says, I'm moving home. <laughs> <laughs> You're all out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> Impossible to explain. Carry on to somebody outside. But I just, anyway, I start to get it now. Then yeah. So you need to have a signal where you knock under the table because this will just go on all night. It's alright. I'm, I'm, I'm about build. to give Paul a signal to say, you put the microphone near your bloody mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> no, move the microphone to you because you're going to keep moving. Stick a fruit pastel on it or something. Oh. Keep you in close like that. Do you want some help, Paul? Please. I'm, I'm Rob. struggling. Stop breathing. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also, <Please. laughs> something, ah. I di- something I didn't mention before was the table really picks up all of you it. badly. Right. It's fine to put your arms on it, but just try not to tap. No taps. Got you. Okay, mate. Yeah, she gets tapped. That's all that. Right. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Cut all that. <laughs> but one day he'll fall out with Larkin. Larkin. He'll just go straight <laughs> to the place <laughs> and mention everything. <laughs> and show so, the bodies. So, Dave. <clears throat> yes. When did you realise you could draw? Oh, God. Um, I, I, my first memory was related to drawing. Um, my granddad drew a brontosaurus uh, with a felt-tip pen, um, and he did it in one line, and then he put a little smiley face on it. And I, I thought, right, that's it. rest of my life, I want to do that. So whether I actually got good at any point, I don't know, but it's always been a thing I wanted to do. So tap the table, sit on the hands. So... It was something that I always went towards school and like at home and everything else. If there was no toys about and you were stuck in a tent in the middle of nowhere or wherever you are, if there was a pad and a pencil, I was happy, man. So, and it's always been the case. I think the infinite possibilities of sitting down with a drawing pad are the things that always take me back to it. So, I've always drawn, still doing it now. Mm. And I highly recommend it to everyone. I do a bit of uh, tutoring with like local kids and stuff like that. And, oh really? College. I used to go to um, I used to go to classes. All right. With with um, with a guy who used to do that. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's a uh, it's U- Uncle Kenny. <coughs> Uncle Kenny. <laughs> he was called. He was like a, it was a cartoony thing as well. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but, uh, I, there's a lot of rumours now about him being a nonce, but <laughs> I don't, I don't. I think you better just assume everyone from I don't that child. I don't know. Is now. I don't. I think he's long dead as well. To be honest, <laughs> we just have to assume everybody we ever saw on TV or had any interaction with probably had something going wrong. Noel Edmonds, I'm sure, has eaten a few people. <laughs> no, I mean, I think Noel Edmonds is allegedly, that, allegedly, no, allegedly, <laughs> mug to camera. <laughs> No, Ed- oh, not Noel Edmonds. <laughs> I hope not. Because Surely not. Swap shop kept me going for a good while. I though. mean, Mr. Blobby. Yeah, that's a bit weird. <laughs> String him up for that, but that's not a swap bit weird. shop. No, good Christmas mornings on top of BT Tower. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what dreams are made of. <laughs> Sweet Noel, <laughs> that tidy beard. Oh, he was tidy, wasn't he? Oh, you know what he did once? Beard. He pulled out a pair of binoculars once Saturday morning. And he pointed him at the camera and he said, you, I can see you getting changed. He said, I know you're trying to change out your pyjamas, but we can see you. And I was doing that at that exact <laughs> moment and it stayed with me for my life. The the fear at that moment, that, what, that what cold that sweat. <laughs> swap shop. Swap shop. That's the morning I mean, swap shop. There is a camera in your telly watching you. And that's what yeah. I, I know that now. That, yeah. <laughs> Believe it. Yeah. There isn't there. Anyway, there might there. have been where you grew up, Romania. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I'm a vampire now. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Swap shop. You're not old enough to oh, remember I am, yeah. swap I've, shop. I've smashed on the over the other side of fifty. Remember the phone year. number? Oh one eight double one eight oh five five. It's ingrained, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the, but the thing with swap shop was it was when they did the swaps, wasn't it? Yeah. And it's like all I ever wanted was action men. Yeah, the more uh, I had plenty, but I wanted more. Yeah, just more and more and we more. Had, we had Star Wars then, didn't we? <laughs> I, I was more. Shop, I was more. Shop. Yeah, I was. So, I think I was still more action man then, though. Yeah, because Star Wars didn't hit us till seventy eight, did it? Yeah, and, and Swap Shop was around before that. But they'd be on the board. Like I want a swap 
like a football for an action man. I'd be like, no way you're going to get that. No way. <laughs> not in this world are you ever going to get an action man for a football. It's just not going to happen. Uh, I'd like to see a resurgence of said show, Swap Shop. The notion that, um, hey, all that stuff, all that biz you've got in your house, you can swap it for something. Great idea. What well, beers? kill you, but... Beers. Whatever like an want. adult one. <laughs> yeah, an adult one will do. I need a gun, Ooh, but <laughs> I've got a load of crayons. What do you it reckon? sounds a bit more tis, was that? <laughs> yeah, a Doing bit. an adult this one. This is what they want. <laughs> there is there is a full episode of Swap Shop on YouTube that I watched the other week. Is that With my lad. The full and thing? Yeah. Oh, was long I, show, I think they it? cut... No, they cut bits out. Yeah. Like, you know, when it had like a... I don't know, Captain Caveman cartoon or something. All right, yeah, yeah. They went on... But, Presumably because of copyright infringement. Yeah, yeah. But it was a full show, and I watched it with my lad. I was like, oh, I was watching this when I was your age. Look at this, look at this. <laughs> he was so bored. It was <laughs> so dull and slow. This is it. We, we only had the three channels. It's difficult to explain to, like, the Americans or cable and my wife who had all sorts of other stuff in Japan. I don't know. I don't three know. Channels. I think cable, cable was, like, the 80s, wasn't it? Yeah, well, 80s, I remember Sky it? turning up and, and thinking it was only posh kids who had Sky. <laughs> It was um, posh kids who had Sky. Yeah, yeah. I had to get John Hall to take me aliens, and he missed the first ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so for years, I didn't know what happened at the beginning. But my Star Wars tape was like that as well. I remember my dad coming in. He'd had a couple one night, and he, and it was a school night. And there, there's three of us in the same room. There's me and I, Mike, and our Pete. And when I'm on the top bunk bed, he wakes me up at like one in the morning, and he, and he says, uh, "I said what." What's this? And my mum's behind him going, Joe, get out of the room, like that. And I said, are you doing give us a clue at one in the morning? And he's going, film like that. I said, right, OK. So we go through the whole routine. Ten minutes later, we figure out he's said, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, and I'm like, the sleep's just like sealed my eyes. And I'm saying, why are you telling me this, Dad? And he went, ka And he pulled out two VHS tapes. And he had all them films on it, and they were in bits, you know, like somebody taped them off a screen and then taped something else, and there was a bit missing. But flipping heck, I wore those tapes out. Absolutely wore them out. Pirate video. Yeah, so that was it. Didn't go to school the next day. We just went through them all. That was like Rob with Deliverance. (laughs) Yeah, worn that tape out, didn't you? (laughs) Big time. Bit of Deliverance. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it squeals like a big ear as well, doesn't it? (laughs) <laughs> everyone, everyone should at some point. I don't think I've even seen that film. Actually. Have you not? Yeah. It's good deliverance. So, so you realise where Squee- Squeal Like a Pig com- comes from? What? Squeal Like a Pig Boy? Yeah. yeah. I, I know it comes from that film, but I've never seen it. Yeah, you can have a, a also line from it. stuff without seeing it, can you? Yeah, there's a few others mm. that I probably should watch. Definitely. You watched it, have you? Well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Burt Reynolds well, at his peak, that wasn't it? Well, I'd say Cannonball Run was his peak, but Smoking the Bandit, Smoking the Bandit yeah. too. Mm, yeah, I love that bit with um, where Cannonball Run, Cannonball Run's the one where they go. Yeah, the Cannonball Run, they were fun. Cannonball Run's an absolute banger. Yeah, yeah. I've never understood why they haven't gone down that route. You know, that sort of like star vehicle thing. Get a load of famous people, give them all a mad character, stick them all in a car, and race across America. Mm. I don't know why they haven't done that film they, again. They, they're still doing Cannonball Run. It's an actual thing, yeah, isn't yeah. it? And Gumball, like timing and Gumball it. Rally, isn't it, or something like that? Well, just timing it, because during pandemic, when there was loads of... Everyone was supposed to be at home and there was no, yeah. no cars on the road, people were breaking the record. Were they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep themselves busy. <laughs> yeah, very clever. Well, it's quiet, cool. wasn't it? Mm. So anyway... Yeah, anyway, off subject. Art. Art, yeah. That's what I do. So I used to be a sign writer... I did, yeah. Um, I'm going to give you a very brief so my, history I think, of... I think my first job, I, I, I did graphic design stuff. Right, yeah. And I worked for a guy who was a <laughs> screen printer. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and that, that was that was what I was wanted to get into. Right, okay. So... The screen printing or the artwork side of it? The artwork side of it. Right, okay. So just like paste up artist. And the old PMT cameras and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, he he was an ex sign writer. He was very good, yeah. really good. But screen printing killed it off. Yeah. So anyway, I, I I worked for him for a while, and then not seen him for I don't know twenty five years or something. Mm. And when we were in Vernon Mill, they had all 
a load of artists in there. He was one of the artists. Right. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I used to work for you. And you oh, yeah, had a bit of a chat. I was only there six months or something. Young kid, moved on. Um, anyway, then he was telling me that, like you were saying, all the vinyl, vinyl, cut vinyl in, yeah. and everything, that came on. So the, the screen printing killed the sign writing and then the vinyl killed the screen printing. Yeah, yeah. So You can yeah. get vinyl machines now that you can just print your own signs on, obviously. Oh. I mean, things have probably moved on in the 20-odd years since I worked for him, but even then you, you the van guy pulls up and says, can you put some signage on my van and you say well it's either two grand if it's drawn by hand or it's 30 quid if you've got it in vinyls so no question really is there yeah so it was always going to die off um i think people just have to adapt and get ready just like this ai stuff rocking up now yeah i think the art could world, be scary that, that couldn't yeah it? i think the art world has to make itself a bit more aware that it's here it's not going away it could be scary have yeah i haven't tried it. it out yet paul It's, it's it's good, is it? Yeah, it's yeah. A bit, it's a bit scary. That's why I've stopped ringing it at night because I just have a chat with that instead. Cause <laughs> get a better conversation. <laughs> do that. They don't even do mum jokes, well, which is Dave's, refreshing. Dave's a um, refreshing change. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave Dave doesn't know you yet, so he'll get as bored as I am with you. <laughs> <sighs> Small you. doses, isn't it? Small doses. I hate you. Feel the love in the room. <laughs> so anyway, back to Dave because Dave was talking and Rob interrupted to talk about his early career, which no one gives a shit about. about. What you need about to say? Talk about start, yeah, starting as a sign writer. Before you buttered, oh, right. it, buttered in, tell him. Before you buttered in, I was just saying this. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sign writing. So <clears throat> did college and stuff like that and um, uni, and I learned a lot there. But I'm strongly of the belief that the qualification itself has done me no favors whatsoever. Um, because nobody's ever asked for it, nobody's ever seen it. And in fact, when I was a sign writer, the thing that screwed that job up was my boss finding out I had a degree. He's like, who do you think you are with letters after your name? Hmm. I said, what? I've worked for you for three years. Why, why have you suddenly turned on me? And he couldn't, didn't like the idea that somebody might have a modicum more intelligence than him. But anyway, so did the degree, visual arts and all that stuff. So I've always drawn, I've always studied it. Um, and I made a promise to myself when I came out of that, that I would have some element of drawing in every job that I did. So sign writing has got a bit of drawing in it. And then after that, I went on to graphic design. And then every time I got a job that was sustaining me, I was looking for what I might be interested in doing next. So I might be there for a few years and then I might start getting interested in, like at the time it was games. So I'd, I was playing a lot of games and I knew there was a games company around the corner from where I worked. So I started researching them. And I bought a bit of computer gear to try and do game covers and just see if I could do it. And then I got in touch with them and got a job with them. And similarly, when I was with them, a few years down the line, I wanted to get into comics. So I'd go into work a bit early, an hour and a half early, and sit in the cafe and just sit there drawing comics. And I always found that it was never the thing I was doing in my job that got me the next job. It was always the thing that I put a bit of extra time in in my own time. I mean, you guys will know yourself. You don't start a job making replica armor or anything like that you, you do it because you want to do it mm. and then the thing that is that you find that you've been doing it just long gets, enough you're good just, at it just takes over and gets out of control and yeah yeah and it's a uh, dangerous then you can you, you have to do it and get paid for it otherwise you go nuts so i was doing that with with every job that i was in really so that's where i am now if something takes my fancy i'll uh, i fancy having a go at that i'll go and give it a go and this cropped up because i was working um, for a TV production company making comics of scripts that they were then going over to the States and selling. And they thought it would be a bit more interesting idea to make a comic of it. And I'm working with me, one of my old mates, Mike Sizemore, who I work with now on the comics. I went to school with him back in Wigan. Um, the two of us, the two lads in the, the town needed educating. Nobody else did because they're all fine just smashing rocks with the teeth. <laughs> but me and Mike fancied doing something other than that. So... Um, we got an education and uh, so I, I work with him now and um, I was saying something there I can't remember what I was on about yeah jobs so uh, I always fancied just shoving off into a direction that I wanted to go in and while Mike and I were working together on these scripts I was I was feeling the urge to just try these comic cons out that had just started taking off again in mm. this country we'd always had them 
You know, you'd know, you have the odd one in Manchester like every four years or something. But suddenly they were in the smaller towns and stuff like that. And Mike and I had done some work for Will Wheaton and the other girl, what's her name? Felicia. Felicia Day, was it? I don't know. Somebody off the who was on the telly and then went on the internet and does some YouTube stuff. They had this YouTube channel and me and Mike did worked on this. Uh, Will Wheaton. <laughs> Will Wheaton. That's him, yeah. Whistles Wheaton and uh, we'd done this uh, like art job and um, it wasn't an art job. It was like a, an online sort of sitcom, but it was based around superheroes and Mike had written it. It was really good. Um, and I did a load of artwork for it. And through that, we got invited to be exhibitors or you know to be an artist at San Diego. So I thought, when's the when am I going to get this chance again? Just chuck a load of money at it. We'll go over see if we can meet anybody. And within a week, I'd seen Wigan Comic Con and San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> and the, the, did, did San Diego disappoint? It was a bit, yeah. Too much walking around, you know. You need to be able to get straight to the bomb cake stall and yeah. get, get your sauce <laughs> before you're at the end of the aisle, you know. Yeah. So it, it, I, I did notice a lot of similarities with them. Not a lot. But there were similarities there, and I just thought, I think I could do this type of nonsense, just sit and do this and there was a kid at the Wigan one who had some stuff he'd printed out on his Tesco printer uh, and he'd drawn it at home and he was selling A4 pieces of Tesco paper with his drawings on for five quid I'm thinking why is that kid doing what I've always wanted to do and I'm not doing it so I went home and drew Optimus Prime and Megatron up and up, up at each other and I, the idea was I thought you could put it on you know your, your corridor as you go into the toilet and feel that tension between them <laughs> when you're going for a wee yeah so so I drew, I drew them in a couple of other little bits and my mate printed them out at his work just on A3 and uh, I went to this Wigan Comic Con just put them out on the table like that put a black tablecloth on because I wanted to look fancy <laughs> and uh, and just, I sold out so I'm like oh, I'll do that again am I going to make them look a bit better so I was messing with coat hangers the next time and pieces of card and all this so they stood up and people could see them and I thought Right, right, okay, I think I can improve this. So and then I found this guy who makes easels and I started buying frames. Suddenly I'm Del Boy. I didn't even know, I didn't even feel the, the change, you know. I've gone from wanting to just produce art but then becoming the guy maybe, who... Maybe you were always Del Boy inside. Yes. And it just was the release. This is it. There are, I naturally, my arm goes down as if I'm carrying a big suitcase and I've got a furry jacket on. So That's you're it. probably right on that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, f I fell into that and it was a hobby for ages. And then the, the comic job we were doing on the TV scripts fell apart. Um, and I only had this left. And I thought, right, okay, to make a job out of this now. But this has led to other things as well, which has been good. Um, and it means you get to meet and talk to humans outside of your house who are into Star Wars and don't mind you talking about Star Wars, unlike people you might marry. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I can, I yeah, can tell her about. I mean, that's why I got, I, I bought your Darth Maul print. All oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons I got it because it's very subtle. Yeah. It's mostly black, and then there's this like red spot in the middle. Yeah. Now, I can put that on the wall, and she'll walk past it, and she'll think right. it's black with a red spot. <laughs> but I know when I look Darth at it. Maul. It's Darth Maul. Well, that is how it was designed, how I wanted it to be. Yeah. I put my That's stuff in I front saw. of... That's what I saw. Uh, it's fine. I could probably draw the Millennium Falcon bombing down the, the trench in Jedi at uh, 10,000 mile an hour and explosions everywhere and ties it in the wall. It might look cool, but it's got to sit in your house. Mm -hmm. And it's got to sit next to your old grandfather clock. Got to pass the clock. wife test. Got to pass the wife test, the husband test, whoever is not into the Star War. Um, yeah. It, it's got to pass that. It's got to look like a nice piece of art. And I, I've always figured, yes, I know people will pay a fortune for Mark Rothko and uh, Van Gogh and all this kind of stuff. My grail is probably the Palatoy R2-D2 still in his packet, right? If I had that on the wall every morning and I came down and saw that, I, every day's better. You know, you come downstairs and you're like, look at this. This is what gives me, this is my art. So I would like to, that's my aim is to try and do that for people. The stuff that I draw is the stuff I want to see on my wall. You know, if, if I want to draw, um, I've probably bought everybody who's ever bought anything of my stuff at my table. So if you heard this, 
this rant a, a million times and I apologise, but Ian McCaig, the guy who um, designed a lot of stuff for the prequels, um, he's a fantastic artist and he's, he's a wizard with the, just a pencil. You know, he's, he can do like the most incredible stuff. He did a lot of the designs on like Amidala and Maul and stuff like that. And he's really good at catching character, right? And he did this talk once where he said, if you can get the, the pose of your character right, it does every, all the work. You don't need to draw all their gear to prove who they are. You can show that a guy's a pirate just by the way he stood. Or, you know, Captain America stands like this, but the Hulk stands like that. Mm -hmm. And the human eye picks that stuff up. So he said, get your pose right, and that's 90% of the work. So I take this, like, literally and think, like, okay, well, if I walk around the house pretending I'm a cowboy with a Nerf gun, I get the wife to take pictures. It's a... Uh, <laughs> That I can be Boba Fett in the picture because I want him to look like a an old fashioned, you know, gunslinging cowboy, you know. Uh, and that pose, if you get that pose right, he was right. You get the pose right, and it sells everything, and it applies to ships, it applies to characters, um, because the, your brain picks stuff up that you know, knock knock man might not. <laughs> There's a lot of banging going on upstairs. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if you can. Can you hear that? Can you yeah. hear that on the mic? Where is it coming from? Upstairs, it must be. Directly up. Can't, can't be coming from upstairs. There's, no one, there's nothing up there. Probably a very heavy <laughs> seagull. Get that stick and bang on the <laughs> ceiling, Paul. <laughs> ah, the bottom of a broom. <clears throat> so, your artwork then led to other things. Do you want to talk about those? Uh, yeah, I've got um, some special creams for the rash on the back. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what do you mean, like, the jobs I do now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, it. okay, got you. Um, yeah, so uh, but the guy I've worked with uh, for many years now, Mike Sizemore, is a writer, an old school friend of mine, and um, we sort of, like, after a big... Uh, gap of not seeing each other for years me and him and another old friend Steve got together and caught up and see, was just looking at what everyone was doing and I ended up falling into working with Mike on a few projects and mainly those TV uh, production scripts mm -hmm. um, but following on from that Mike always Mike and I were always big fans of John Carpenter's work um, in fact Mike used to come into A-level college and slip me a, a video here and there that um would freak my mum out if she ever saw the cover, like, From Beyond, when she, oh, she lost her mind when she saw the cover of From Beyond. But he passed me all these horrors, so he really got me into, like, uh, the horror genre and stuff, and I was always a, a carpenter fan anyway, but then the thing comes out, and um, my older brother and his mates hired it um, to, specifically to scare me, and then that yeah. dog bursts open, and every one of them left the room while we were watching it, and I'm sitting there going, this is ace, and none of them can handle it. But from that point on, I was like, carpenter all the way, you know. Anyway, so Mike's always been chasing John to try and get some kind of work with him. And eventually, he worked with him in a different capacity, screenwriting and stuff like that, which is what he does. But John and his wife, Sandy, um, own a comic company called Storm King Comics. And they, they continue the good name of John Carpenter in comic form. So we had a look at what they were doing and we ended up being invited to go along and, and work on a couple of things and we did a um, he does a horror anthology every year called Tales from a Halloween Night and basically writers and artists can submit stuff to go into this comic and it just goes into a, like a collection comes out every year and it's on like the ninth volume now so it does pretty well and we, Mike says let's do a horror western because we know John's into his westerns and he loves his horror and so we did that and uh, then we get a call do you fancy doing a book together so we did like an eight issue series called Vortex, which is like, I suppose a spiritual successor to the thing because it's body horror and it's science fiction and all this stuff. But it was a chance for Mike to send me scripts that would say like, we've got to get this guy's guts out of him and into another guy and, and have them guts turn into something which then does something else. And I'm like, okay, all right, this, these are the kind of drawing challenges I like. You know, costume design is one thing, but making a face out of guts, which then goes inside of another guy. This is the way forward. But <clears throat> John and Sandy are brilliant bosses because they trust you to get on with stuff. And up until that point, I'd never really had a boss who just says, we know what you do, go and do what you do. I have a, I've met them as I've gone through life, but this was like n no contact almost. It's just like, get on with it. 
and they left us to get on with doing a book. So finished that, did another one, finished that, and we've been working with them for years now. What it's done is it's given us both a lot of experience in making comics. And then last year, I think it was only last year, um, I, I've been mates with uh, Nick Brokenshire for a good few years, and I've always seen him at the comic cons and stuff like that, and he's been drawing Star Wars comics for years. Star Wars Adventures with the... Uh, I think it was originally with IDW and then with Dark Horse. Because I don't know if you remember the Dark Horse Star Wars comics from back mm -hmm. in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. 90s, yeah. Where they continued on from Jedi. I was, I thought that was, that was the, one of the best things I'd seen, you know, like this whole idea of cloning the Emperor and all that kind of thing, you know. Uh, Dark Empire and the Boba Fett tales and tales of Jabba and all that stuff. Dark Horse did a load of great stuff back in the day. So he invited nick invited me to come on and work with him doing the coloring on um star wars book which was jackson remember jackson the big six foot rabbit who was in all the star wars comics after the first film came out you remember him oh whoa in for a treat there go and have a look for him it's just a rabbit just a big rabbit in a space suit <coughs> an x-wing suit jumping about with a cape there's some distant memory of it yeah you, so when it was it was star wars comes out and then we all got the comics in the UK and they had those like dart versions of a TIE fighter and an X-Wing that you folded out of cardboard when you got the first issue. And those comics ran for ages. And because we'd only had Star Wars and maybe Splinter of the Mind's Eye as a book. They, they were the Marvel ones, weren't they? Yeah, it was Marvel. Yeah. And, and they just ran with it and just said, well, let's have an adventure where Luke's on a space raft going over a pink sea getting attacked by a massive, like, I don't know, uh, plesiosaur or something with it with like a hernet on so all this madness was just they just chucked everything on the page and one of the characters that came out of it was this guy jackson j-a-x-x-o-n right and he went on adventures with han and chewie and all that and uh we did a comic about him um last year oh it was for celebration in fact so that would be this year am i right and thinking mm. yeah so it was released then um blimey time moves quick doesn't it oh it doesn't Anyway, um, so we did that, and um, I've just been working on another one with him, which I'm not allowed to talk about. I'll get shot. <laughs> um, it was great. It's doing actual Star Wars stuff. So, yeah, that's uh, that's where I'm up to at the minute. Um, I'd, I'd like to do this type of stuff for the people who uh, who are Star Wars. Um, I'd like to move into actual licensed mm. print work. Um Mainly yeah, do you, do you see a lot of it at Celebration? Yeah, I, I went for a good look round. I know a lot, quite a few of the artists because I, I like that sort of there was, alternative there was some poster good stuff, scene as well. But there was also mm. some not so good stuff, I think. Yeah, Th this is always the case with every... But that's um, personal taste, I'm guessing. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, but, but your personal taste will be different to the guy who comes along and sees the, the dross and goes, that's for me. Yeah. And might not think much of the thing that you think is the, the pinnacle. And I, I, yeah. I've always figured that yeah I mean some people are wrong aren't they yeah some people are just wrong, <laughs> really just wrong. But I've, I've been doing the the con circuit art wise for, for many moons now and it's kind of pointless looking down on other artists because for me as an artist who does that I meet people of all abilities doing this and I keep thinking of that kid who did it at Wigan who, who had the guts to sit up and, mm. and put one of his drawings on a table and ask somebody do they want to buy it yeah. And maybe he sold it out of sympathy. <laughs> Someone's gone, oh, someone's kid. Yeah. Was he drawn? It's rubbish. Well, I'll get it because it's a kid. But he still did it. Yeah. And I think even if they're rubbish, you know, they're getting up and they're giving it a pop. And I was rubbish. Well, I might even still be rubbish. But I gave it a go. And as, the more you do it, the better you get at it, you know? Mm. I'm guessing your first helmet might have had like horns <laughs> on it or something or a gun sticking out the back. You'll get yeah. better, don't you? Yeah. You've, you've talked about that recently, haven't you? How the, the first helmets were quite yeah. a challenge. Learning, learning, learning to build them and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's. it's uh, Do you find it hard? Let me ask you. Do you find it hard to e explain to someone the stuff that you will automatically think because you've done all those ones in the past? You'll have made all the mistakes, and you're at a stage now where you're standing down that stormtrooper chin, and you know what you're doing. But to deconstruct it and take it apart and tell somebody else to do it, I find that quite difficult I sometimes. Think the biggest problem is I know how I do it and I can explain how I do it. Yeah. But if somebody's 
started doing it a different way. Yeah. And you've got to try and then it's like, okay, this is it's wrong to begin with. Yeah. You know, so I've come, in, st- yeah. I've come in and it's wrong already, so I, w- I would have done it a different way. Um, but yeah, it's it's difficult to explain because yeah. you're like, do you, do you just do that? And it's like, yeah, yeah. just do you it. Just do that. But yeah. I mean, it's like you just draw this. Yeah. No. It's hard when it's mu- when it's muscle memory as well because it sounds like a, a different subject. But when my wife first came here from Japan, she she wasn't a big swimmer. She couldn't swim very well, and I was in like all kinds of swimming clubs when when I was a kid and competing and all that. So. Me deconstructing what I know as muscle memory and trying to teach her that is an entirely different mm. job on its own. And similarly with drawing, everyone comes at it in a different way. I don't know if you've ever seen the work of a fella called Adam Hughes. He, he's done a bit of Star Wars stuff in the past, but he, he's really good at those sort of like, what would you call it? Is it called a good time girl sort of poster? You know, the type mm-hmm. of thing they do oh, on yeah, the side yeah. of the planes and stuff like that. Yeah. He's absolutely phenomenal at anatomy. Um I was watching a video of him drawing once, and he doesn't draw. He takes his mouse and he makes the little dot, 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 ant trail selection in Photoshop, and he uses that and then drops things into it. He doesn't draw lines. He doesn't actually do it. It's a very difficult thing to process, but he's found a way of working that really works for him. Mm. I couldn't even begin to draw the way he draws, but he's he's found it, and I guarantee nobody's taught him to draw that way because it's so weird, but... It really look, it really works because he's one of the best in the world at it, um, and so I see all these other artists working at these cons and stuff, and I think maybe your stuff isn't to my taste, but there might be something in the way you've done it that mm. might be interesting. It'd be you know it's always good to talk to them and pick that stuff apart and see how it works. Working with Nick now on these comics, he makes comics entirely differently to the way I do it. He's very much more traditional and talented at what he does by deciding where every black line is going to go. Whereas I draw, because I've worked with computers for years and I was a sign writer, so I, I'm, I approach it in a different way. You have, you have a stick? A stick like art on the computer. Like, yeah. Don't get any biz on my hands. <laughs> 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 I think it's great, though, meeting another artist and seeing how they work. Because mm. they might suddenly open your eyes to something you haven't done before and you think, oh, I've always wondered how that got done, you know. Mm. But I'm, that, I'm very... On or off. Yeah. Um, that goes for my food as well. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, Clark will bring bring some food in and he'll be like, <laughs> this is, and he'll list all the stuff, and he'll be like, I can't taste anything like that. It just tastes good. <laughs> it's got one taste, it's good. Yes, I like it. <laughs> or, oh, no, it tastes bad. <laughs> That's it. Right. There's no subtleties in there. It's just... No, no. Just, I either like it, Instantly, I like it or I don't like it. Good stuff. Um, so that that can be difficult when when people are like want to review stuff and yeah, yeah. ask your opinion and stuff, and you're like, I hate it, and I'm not even looking at it. <laughs> so you walked around. I'm, the, I'm just. I'm literally on it. That's it. You walked around that artist Black alley at, at celebration. Yeah, it's even. I going, really like that. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, that's no. dog shit. I think. Everyone can do that, whether they act on nope, it's a different I, thing, I you know not, what I mean? I not do that. That's you can't not do it, I yeah. feel like yeah. There's no and politeness that, there. That's, that's with everything, <laughs> it's with, you know, listening to a song. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, that's mega. Do you never get one? I, I get this with food sometimes, especially in Japan when you eat stuff like you don't even know what it is, right? I ate something once and it looked like some Hellboy would fight. <laughs> and, and sometimes you can eat something there. And I, I, I was thinking about this one, food, natto, for about a week I had it and I said I don't know what it is I don't know whether I, I think it's the best thing I've ever tasted or I hate it and I couldn't figure out what it is it's a fermented soybeans right so you're not selling it to me no I'm not going to sell it to you when you hear the rest of the description and you know that <coughs> bit in Alien 3 where she's pinned against the wall and it comes upside like that and all the little feathery bits of spit coming out oh yeah mouth. you take the fermented soybeans which have died and they've congealed into something and you whip them up right and it looks like gauze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like, mm, like that. Yeah. It smells like feet. And when you pick it up with your chopsticks like that, all this stuff wafts in the wind. I'm not, right. I'm not, exactly. underst- so I'm not understanding how you can get something that looks like gauze yep. and it behaves like that. Yep. And then you're still thinking, mm, do I like that or not? <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. 
I already so, don't like you. You sound like my mum. I hate oysters. Have you ever had one? No. But I hate them. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but what I learned in Japan was um, if I don't try this stuff, then I'll never know whether it's my new favourite food or not. And so we get this natto brought out, and I said, you've explained it, love, and I've seen it, and I, I feel like running. Um, but how's it going to make sense to me? And it took me a good week of trying it again and again. Didn't know whether I hated it or not. And then she said something that made sense. She said, this is the equivalent of, like, Stilton. Right? So, you know, Stilton, mm. knackered cheese with, with biz running through it. Yeah. Bit of a... Yeah. It's a, a quiet taste. quiet taste. A quiet taste, but for the people who like it, they like it, you know. Yeah. So I thought, oh, that kind of makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. So it, now... It kind of does, but... But it took me a week. That was my point. I could, if I'd have done the yes or no thing straight away, I would have missed out on feet smelling snot yeah which is brilliant my son loves it he has it for breakfast um whew, that can be a challenge you're actually turning my stomach a little bit oh, you, you you try a lot though I've, it's I've nice seen, no, i won't try i don't like trying I've, stuff i've seen you eat I don't a like baby trying octopus stuff. it looked like a scab <laughs> <laughs> crossing the picket line oh the octopus oh man and it, it, it didn't pull a face or anything it's just like that. The it looked to me like, mm. the octopus <laughs> didn't pull a face no, we were <laughs> <laughs> We 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 were in Rome, mm -hmm. and when in Rome, we we, we met Marco, a friend of ours out yeah. there, and he's got his baby octopus with him. <laughs> no, we, we 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 were going to this restaurant and eating pasta and everything, yeah. and he was like, "Oh no, that's a tourist restaurant. I'll take you to a proper." Oh, yes. local place yeah. so we were like oh yeah the adventure begins and we're expecting like the best garlic bread yeah. and the best pasta and they brought the menu out and it was all like seafood and stuff <laughs> right I don't eat seafood you're not a seafood fella I like tins of tuna right yeah or a tuna steak you are my or mom. chips <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll eat that <laughs> but if the tuna tastes too fishy I don't like it yeah so I'm not a seafood fan Anyway, so I'm like, oh, what do you recommend? And I think also because the menu is in Italian, because it's not a tourist place. Yeah. So I'm like, what do you recommend? So he's like, oh, the octopus. And I thought, you know what? The wedding in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm expecting like, like the leg. Chop. <laughs> How big's this octopus? Can you know. bring me the warlords of Atlantis, like, dish, yeah. please? I've seen them in. Captain Nemo, right? <laughs> Massive. And I'm so I'm thinking a big leg, all sliced and like fried or something. You know, like yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. big round, like yeah. leg, looking like a looking like a potato smack. Yeah, I'm thinking. Oh yeah, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go because I'm thinking tuna steaks, all right, because it tastes like meat. It's not like fish. <laughs> yeah, I'll have the octopus. Go on, go on. Be brave. Everyone else is like, hey, I'll just have the uh, bread, <laughs> the bread and the balsamic yeah. vinegar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anyway, it came. And it was like this tiny, tiny. You know what I'm going to say? Have you had this? Yeah, this like tiny, like yeah, just tiny little like, fetus, basically a fetus of an octopus. I'm so tasty. And I'm like, <laughs> and he's like, hmm? <laughs> and he's watching. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like eating. Frog spawn or something. It was. I'm not that I've eaten frog spawn, but <laughs> that's another one. I imagine. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. No, not for many years, obviously. <laughs> but oh, it was bad. It was really bad. See, you're you're very much like um, some of my family members or some of my friends who they don't like it before before they've had it because you, you've made that decision yeah but i didn't I, like I fight it. that though yeah but I, but I didn't like it no I, 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 I get that uh, but I, I i have the ability to fight it and, and sometimes i wish i didn't because yeah but there's some of the stuff of it i mean like you're saying oh it's like stilton cheese right it took me it's a while like, to figure it out yeah yeah but figure this out stilton <laughs> cheddar i'll go with the cheddar there you go <laughs> that's all you need to do you don't even need to mess about with it no no you don't need to try and get Acquire the taste. <laughs> Just eat the chi eat them. See, it's all a big. There's so many cheeses that are not <laughs> stinky. You don't need it. Dairy Lee. Oh, Dairy Lee. <laughs> Dairy Lee. Do you know what? 
I used to go around my nana's. <laughs> yeah. I was about like five or something. Mm. And you know what my nana used to do? <laughs> <laughs> she used to hide Dairy Lee Triangle somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I used to, used to find it. I could have it. <laughs> this expense is weight problem. Uh, I used to start with Bourbons with my dog, but she was pretty good at finding him. She had a big nose. <laughs> You I'll hide them for your dog? Yeah, yeah. Not, just, I don't think they're supposed to eat chocolate biscuits. I know. didn't know that in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Then. She did become an, a very strange shape, but she looked like a table in the end. Um, I think the fat had gone around her spine and she, her back went flat. And my mate put a book on her when, when they came around once. I said, yeah, she does. She does look like a table. So maybe I shouldn't have given her chocolate. Uh, that's if bourbons are real chocolate. Yeah, I was just thinking I don't... Uh, I would never think They're of probably bourbon not, biscuits it's real yeah, chocolate. chocolate for David, have you noticed what? how quiet Paul's been while you're discussing food? Is Paul, he hungry? No, no, it's because he has the palate of a angry toddler. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. He won't eat... He doesn't like melted cheese. He doesn't like beef. <clears throat> he likes sausages and brown sauce. What's wrong with that? I like pies. So when, I, when I'm staying outside your house... Yeah. Watching. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll go to the local chippy, the local pie shop. Hold on a minute. Is that where my wall pies go? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're nice. <laughs> so it's a, it's a good job you've got uh, quite a dark sense of humour, which obviously um, you do. Uh, when when the need <clears throat> arises, things are different when you're in church because or you're meeting your kid's teacher. Because really? before we were... Before we were talking, he, he he was. You were talking about your rare area where you work, your studio, and he was saying, "Oh, is it open plan?" And you said, "No." And he said, um, "Oh, it looks it from outside." <laughs> <laughs> well, at some point, I'll, I'd like to see the diary of what I was wearing for November 1995, but um, get round to it. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't think you'd still fit in here. <laughs> <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Cheers, COVID. Thanks very much, lockdown. Yeah, true. And yeah, that's a brilliant idea. We can just blame it on that, like the government do for everything else. Yes. I've been doing that. Excellent. Yeah, Good yeah. idea, that. Well, I... Well, how long was COVID? No. See, I've been blaming... <laughs> like that. I've been blaming... <laughs> I've been blaming my accident. Oh, God. I know. <laughs> but got do, something else do you to know, blame now. It's, how um, how does it get chewed into every conversation and every podcast? At, at the time of recording this, we are just over the anniversary, the first anniversary. Really? Yeah. I celebrated it. Feels like it ten years. Bought myself a card to. and everything. How long was lockdown in the UK? Well, no, we're talking about my accident. Oh, you're talking about your accident. He's talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not this, this happens. A, this happens a lot, David. I, Several I, conversations yeah. go on at once. No, no, Rob. You need a camera on you so you can give it the Burt Reynolds. Oh, he's got one. He's got, one. he's got a tiny little one. Clark, yeah. cam. Go on, fucking the band. Rob it. crashed his bike. No, that's it. I got it ran over. And then, then somebody else crashed your bike. I got ran over. Right. Oh. Okay. Right. So. Imagine you're walking down the street and someone runs you over. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now imagine that you weren't just walking, you were on a motorbike. Right. Someone still runs you over. It's the exact same thing. Ima- imagine, listening, in the imagine listening to it every day. It. It's also not the life. exact same thing, because if I was walking down the street, I wouldn't be wearing a motorbike helmet and boots that go up to my knees and leathers that, you know... Like and a, a motorbike. motorbike. Yeah, and I wouldn't have a motorbike <laughs> strapped still, to me like... You would look good. Thing, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's the same thing. I right? know. I do... I do I did do. I did feel so for you, but I've got sick of it now. I'd like to move on. I don't know. Mate, of mine uh, had a, a crash on his kidding. bike. I think he just stopped and then fell over. <coughs> All right. Um, <laughs> sounds I sounds think, familiar. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, the way he described it, it was a bit more dramatic than that. But when you when I actually sat and thought about it, I thought, oh, did he just say he just stopped at the lights and couldn't put his feet down quick enough because he's only a little fella. And right, over he went, hurt his leg. I think he had another crash as well, but that might have been the, the one he might have been talking about. But a big one, a bigger one, yeah. I, I asked him at some point. Um, I said, "Do you not fancy getting a big, like, not a Harley, but you know, one of them choppers and just relaxing back into it and hitting the road?" And he went, "No, I want to go dead, dead fast." <laughs> yeah, I said, "Oh, yeah. that's probably a good reason for you to buy a dead, dead fast motorbike then." Well, yeah, that's well, the reason was, for doing it. I was shocked with you because you, your dad. The big bikes. Yeah. When, I, when I first it's met you, it's not the you. size, Paul. It's not I, the I know, size. But you, you, you'd not had any crashes, and you'd had you know big sports bikes. Yeah. Then you got this little. Since I was sixteen. Yeah. Then you. Then well, that's what about twenty years. Then. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. not. 
It's because some idiot drove, ran me over, drove right into me. I wonder if he's having a conversation with someone to now go. saying some idiot just driven his motorbike right in front of me. <laughs> he was walking along <laughs> with his motorbike. Someone drove right into the front of my car when <laughs> yeah. I was turning, yeah. I like it. Rob's, Rob's got a great logic. You know, his yes or no. Yeah, logic yeah. He's already explained to you. My favourite part about his accidents has been his, not how he's come to terms with it, but because it's still ongoing with the insurance, he said whatever they come back with, as a mount, he's going to go, ask him, will he accept that much money for me to drive into him while he's yeah, on the yeah, motorbike? Yeah. <laughs> and see if he goes, oh, yeah, that's enough money for that, because he said no money in the world's worth. No, no. Yeah. Oh, just to clarify, no, I don't want to drive into the driver of the car. I want to drive into the solicitor that's offering that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's getting angry now. Isn't he? <laughs> Saying that, though, you've just had another scale on your toe, haven't you? So oh, there's still it's... ongoing injuries, isn't there? And, and all them rolls on your neck. It's <laughs> terrible. The, the gross, it's, the gross burger. it's sickening. What? The, the rolls on your neck, what them? They must have been to do with the vaccine. <laughs> I thought you said rolls on the yeah. neck. I thought you were on about like the gross burger. That's, how, <laughs> from a that's how we got onto this. Because yeah. I've not been out of exercise ever. True that. Yeah. Well, I, I don't ever remember you exercising before the accident just to jump in on that one. Well, that's because you've got a short memory. <laughs> what was... um. <laughs> Everything else about him short. And <laughs> what, what was I here for again? It's weird that because I've I'd, I've already interviewed you at um, yeah we had a chat Blackburn, to yeah but I met met you a couple of years before that I well met you briefly at Burnley but yeah. then met you properly a couple of years ago at Blackburn the first yeah. time they did it actually yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and um, well, I think I've bumped into most of you guys yeah, at well, some point or other. It don't matter though, did he? He's my friend. Well. <laughs> <laughs> that you, these He's activating the, the magnets side. now. I can't get away. <laughs> this is what it's like. I know. It's all right. Go on. Oh, Go I still on. love you. You have some time together. Go on. Oh, he's getting jealous again. What I've let you have your moment and talked about your injuries. We can come back to that in five minutes if it's easier. <sighs> no, please don't. All right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, we um, to talk, be, talked to, in depth. To, to, to be fair, though, you did. The moment you walked in, he was already trying to uh, win you over and sweet talk you because he was going to get into all of his rugby career. But all oh, right, then well, you said, "No, nah, fuck rugby." That's that and then that, yeah. That, yeah, he's just he just <laughs> he just <clears throat> curled up inside. No, no, no. I'll let you know that I am a very good swimmer as well. <laughs> it's all coming out now. So, <laughs> have, you, have you got an ejector seat on? <laughs> Pull the rip cord. <laughs> Grab your ankle. <laughs> 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 no, uh, <laughs> the key for Sutherland out the plane in 24. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <clears throat> Blackburn. Blackburn, we yeah. met at Neil and Paul's wonderful yeah, Star yeah. Wars event. Yeah, monkey rocket guys. Yeah. yeah so uh, you, you've done that since I, yeah, I, yeah, that, haven't you? I, I think I've been doing, I think the first one of those I did was Preston when it was back in the Guild Hall mm -hmm. many, about 40 moons ago. Um, I wasn't there right from the beginning. I think they've been going a couple of years. Um, but once... I have this thing of, like, if I'm doing the shows and the comic cons and stuff like that, I try my best to meet the people who have organised it. Right. Be, I know it's kind of old-fashioned, but if my name's going up saying I'm I'm going to do this show with these guys, I want to know I'm, who I'm being associated with. And there's a few shows that I do and I don't do yeah. because I've met people who I just don't like. Yeah, some um, shysters. Uh, yeah, there's some gang stars. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, right, Neil and Paul hit it off with them straight away anyway, but they treat you nicely at, your, at the shows that you do. Um, they, they go out of their way to make sure you've got a good table, you're happy with what you've got and stuff like that. They're extremely reasonable when it comes to table prices because yeah. all of those are shooting up like sky high at the minute. And there's only them and uh, Jamie's showing... Wales, Telford, that I do anymore, really. Oh, okay. Um, I used to do a load more. Sorry, I do the stuff with Paul in Wigan as well. Um, Sounds weird, weird, weird saying Wales in Telford. I know, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a weird one. Yeah, we, we started in Wrexham and it was there yeah, for many yeah, course, years yeah. and then it just got so big for the venue that... The, the Wrexham venue was brilliant, though, wasn't it? It was really... It was, yeah. it was quite fun, apart from the very last one they did where we had a, a massive, like, um, godlike thunderstorm and somebody had put the marquee on the inside out and it was uh, the rain was coming into the marquee, yeah. sitting on the top of the, yeah. the ceiling, and then the wind hit it, and you'd watch this wave move down the entire tent, and one guy lost all his art stock because he really? put the whole lot of it out. out and I, I thought I, it was going to be a funny story, so you got to that point. Yeah, um, topped himself, I think. 
<laughs> I don't think he did. If he did, sods mate. Um, <laughs> one he won't be watching. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. One less bit of competition. Eh? <laughs> but it was always a great venue. It was always a fun. I know you talked about actually, and uh, it was a no anyway for me. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're sad he's dead, <laughs> but he was big. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't missed it. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't do ears. He was absolutely biz. But um, that venue was always a good venue, but grew out of it. And then His it horses were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there we go. So, yeah, um, we met. That's where we met. Yeah. I, I think that's where we met because um, I meet thousands of people at my table who come and tell me what their favourite yeah. part of the remake of Ghostbusters is. Um, not all of them try and take your trousers down, though, do they? Not all of them. So he yeah, does, he does stand out. He does oh, yeah. stand out. Oh, well. Yeah. I mean, uh, For that reason. I've got a special lock. Never going to get it. But, um... <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I, I meet a lot of people at these things, and I often find, like, people expect you to remember them out of a, fa a, yeah, a crowd yeah. of, like, 300 people that you've met during the day. And sometimes faces are memorable, and sometimes they're not. And sometimes people start up or pick up a conversation you were halfway through with them. One guy. <laughs> uh, do, you, yeah. do you remember? Do you remember? Um, we have the same on our stand, don't we? Really? Yeah, but, but I'm. I, I don't know. It's probably early onset. Do you do, do, you, <laughs> um, do you just go yes or I, no? <laughs> don't accept. I'm you. bad at remembering, and I've got. Oh, I'm terrible. Not um, not a great attention span, yeah. and. Sometimes Paul will tell you about this. He will be talking to me, and I'll just be like, I've, I'm halfway I, through, I get, halfway get, through yeah. what he's guys. Don't take about. it personally. He does this <laughs> halfway, <laughs> halfway through what he's talking about. I've kind of like started thinking about something else. Yeah, and I say, have you seen this? David's already witnessed this from when David was talking about his early career. And Rob hijacked it to himself. <laughs> Rob's always thinking about what he wants to talk about next, no matter what you're saying. Or food. Yeah. No, if I don't get it out when I thought about it, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. I've I forgot about it. to doing this thing where I'm sit down and go right. I'm going to draw in this thing today, and I need reference for it. So I'll sit and go. What was I going to draw? What was I going to draw? And you know, what I've I've learned my fingers know more than me. So I put them on the keyboard and I let them move, and it'll go. Like um, I don't know, uh, submarine. I go, oh no way! And, you, and my fingers have written it. What? But I've, my my brain's forgotten it. But Jesus my body's Christ. remembered what I was going to do, and it'll it'll pick out the first three letters that my fingers were going to land. Quite on. special, aren't you? I think so. I think someone's controlling. What me. are you going to do if they write murder or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't see, I, see what, <laughs> what happens. <laughs> you you kind of like my big brother. He's he's on is the he called, by the Is he called Daryl? <laughs> D-A-R-Y-L. Oh, no, he's actually called David. <laughs> oh, my Lord. He's got red hair. A few of them about. <laughs> <laughs> he's got red hair. I think, <laughs> I think there's a surrogate thing going uh, on here. Yeah. Was it because his brother really doesn't like him? No, I haven't got brother. You're my brother. No, I've got a... You know? I've, I've got... <laughs> that was pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got a brother who I, I, who I also have nothing in... Just get rid of him, have me. I've got rid of him, mate. You know? oh, um, yeah, he, used to do, he used to do that thing, you know... Um, were like he lived to annoy me, like, you know. You get like brothers who are just that's he what was brothers known as are supposed needle. to do. I know what they're supposed to do. I mean, I did it with my yeah. younger brother as well, but yeah. I still like him and get on with him. Whoa, but the Hold older a second. one, you're a middle, I'm a middle. Oh dear, he, left to me on devices. The older brother. The oh dear. I've met both his younger brothers, they right. both hate him. Vengeance is it because you are the first and you're the most special? Because that's what it is with my older brother, but it's not. I don't make the rules. <laughs> yeah, you've just got to, you've got a bit of luck, you know, haven't you? Well, it's, it's just the receiver of the that's rules. That's the problem, isn't it? The first one is special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> the last rule, fact. It's and just then a fact. The last one, yeah. that's always the baby. Yeah, yeah. The middle one. Yeah. Go and fix your own fence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get left to my own devices. It's kind of nice in a way. But at the same time, I'd like somebody to just tuck a tenner into my pocket and say, get yourself a comic. Yeah. At the age of 50. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I'm That's why I only had two. Brothers. Kids. <laughs> I was going to say, how do you choose how many brothers? Nah, I don't need any more. <laughs> no, send that one back. <laughs> Skip him. Oh, he doesn't really talk about his youngest brother. No. Disappointment. Oh, man. <laughs> That's what, he sound, that's what he's told me. I work anyway. with mine. Yeah. I work oh, with I mine. He hates his youngest, but he prefer, much prefers the middle one. Right, okay. Yeah, he don't like the youngest. But I don't have a favourite. That's not what he told me. 
Anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so... Um, I'm gonna fall. I've been given a stool, so I'm, uh, I'm struggling now. Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't know why I gave the child of the group a stool. Know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I'd behave more than him. I'll leg twitch you. <clears throat> the bum's getting sore now. It's not his leg that worries me. It's when he's, when he's sat there in his hand, like you see his arm doing like this. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get that bullet out. Yeah. My Yeah, that's why the reason my leg twitches, because of all the nerve damage. If it's, yeah, yeah. yeah in, the definitely. Big, in the big accident. Yeah. So the nerve damage you're carrying the weight of that neck. Have you, no, have you noticed how, in a car accident, the nicest people on earth suddenly turn into the worst people on earth? Like, some girl went into the back of my car once, and she pushed me into, like, this old woman who was in front of me in the queue. And uh, I thought, right, OK, so I better check they're OK. So I, I get up, and I go and say, so you two all right? And she went, I'm really sorry, It was it's my fault. It's raining, and the bottom of my shoe was, is wet. I've just got in the car. Mm. And I've slipped and I've gone into the back here. I said, oh, I said, okay, well, we'll figure that out later. I was just checking you're all right. And I go to the old woman in front. I said, are you all right? She went, no, I've got whiplash. You've just gone into the back of me. I said, I didn't go into the back here. Somebody pushed me into the back here. There's a girl behind me who's just told me that. She, mm. this. she went, oh, where's she? I said, your whiplash has got better. <laughs> <laughs> so I checked she was all right. I checked the girl was all right behind me. Um, and two days later, I get a... Uh, Oh, so, sorry, that was it. I'm talking to the old woman. She's got out of her car now and her neck's better. And I'm talking to her about how a few months earlier somebody else had done that with a previous car and written it off. They'd just gone into the back of me and smashed the car to bits. And uh, I said, yes, well, the car was written off. Um, and then two days later I get a letter from the girl who's gone into me, her solicitor, saying she heard you say your car was already written off and she, it wasn't her fault. And I'm like, this is like... An episode of like um, a, a spooky '60s sitcom or something like that, where somebody's going through something where it feels like everyone's lying to them, and all the like uh, camera angles are weird, and all the focus is being pulled in a weird way, and there's glitter on the lens. <laughs> I'm saying, are people really like this? Are they all like secret assholes just waiting to be unveiled? You know, mm. and uh, but it, it was the car crash, the, the the idea of money. You know, nobody. She took responsibility, but then suddenly. The, the solicitor's gone you do realise that you can get him done because he said that and she's gone okay let's do that then I think right yeah. that's nice I kind of want to live in a different country now thanks all the best <laughs> scary anyway, what, what am I here for <laughs> <laughs> so the, world. The, oh, let's, the country's going down the toilet let's not let's not get on the country going down the toilet the country's going yeah. down the toilet it was already in the toilet mate it was already <clears> in it <throat> right Star Wars know. Get the pictures out. Let's have a look. Some of the pictures. Yeah, I know it's an audio podcast, so for those, I'm going yeah, I'll, I'll I'll nar- to explain it. I'll narrate. Well, I um, oh, I, you're probably best off finding it. But you know for? exactly where they are. Um, Which one? Hut Slayer, for example. Hut Slayer, you yeah, say? Yeah, so I, okay. I, I um, got one for Secret Santa with the Logan 6 guys for uh, uh, CC. Yeah, that's a bit, bit saucy, isn't it, that one? Yes. Oh, um... Well, I it's could. it's good the way he explains it, though. Yeah, I could talk a glass eye to sleep about everything I've, I've drawn. We're we're like about four hours into the podcast, so I think anyone who's still listening now <laughs> will we'll, right. we'll, we'll know that. I don't know where that's best going, but look at that. I've given you, I've well, sent you. Well, will put it up a on the of that there as well. So if uh, and everyone who is listening to this, I am um, on. Apple Podcasts and Spotify and, and all that kind of stuff, and they're not watching it on YouTube, which is available on YouTube, they can go to your website and um, have they a can. look at these uh, images. Yep, yep. You can um, find me at um, no. <laughs> um, and Just go to search for Cherry Sheriff um, anywhere. And you'll Why? Find, you'll I, mean, I wanted to ask you that. Why Cherry Sheriff? Um, there's a local, uh, the Royal Oak down by where I live, and uh, many moons hence, uh, they decided to bring out fruit beers. And um, there was one called Leafman's a German beer that came with like a big elaborate um, paper sort of wrapping around it. And this like, like an old Grolsch type of thing. Yeah, on the yeah, top yeah. Thing. And so when you took this paper off, you were left with this mass of like you know paper like that at the table. So I started making a cowboy hat out of it and said I was going to do me some fancy shooting. <laughs> and one of my mates called me a cherry sheriff because I'm a gua, yeah, gingua, <coughs> and uh, oh. and it just stuck. So I, I googled it just out of interest. I thought nobody's got that, nobody's using that. So there's no real reason for having it other than nobody else has got it. So uh, stuck with cherry sheriff. It's easier to remember than Dave because there's loads of us. Um, 
and or at least an album. I never tell you that. I've got no. an album out. Oh really? Yeah, there's something to do. Um, no, I got a record deal, and I thought I'll use that name. So I put this record out, and uh, I use it in everything I do now. So we can probably track down everything I've done under right. Jerry Sheriff. But it, well, uh, where's the signed copy of the album then? Oh yeah, I've left it. I don't Jesus see. Christ. It's on a um, eight track. <laughs> 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 it's actually on <coughs> Spotify, I think. You can just go and get it off, off something like that. Well, so did you get listen. paid off Spotify like every every month? <laughs> did I get paid at all for that? <laughs> Was this released in 2007? Uh, it's got a red cover with an outline of yeah. a yellow fella. First down. track is called Ping Pong. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's yeah. Like it's on Apple Music. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Um, basically, I, I, I was going to work as a sign writer and it got so dull that um, you'll know yourselves as creatives, you've got to get the thing out that you need yeah. to get done. And I was getting home <clears> from work and I was just sitting there with me sampler and me twiddly this, twiddly that, and I was just putting tunes together for years. And then uh, a mate of my brother's, uh, mate of my brother, his dad, owns a blues label and wanted to start a new label up. And he said, did you fancy doing that? Said, yeah, yeah. So I ticked it off the bucket list. Maybe wow. uh, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll play out. <laughs> to uh, to yeah. one of your tracks and see if we can get a copyright strike. Oh, like sure. love that. I don't know where I stand on the copyright thing. So even me saying the name of my own album, I might get shot. Yeah. But um, I'm willing to risk it. They might they might send you a letter saying these idiots are thinking about using this music. I know. What do you think about that? They send a letter. <laughs> Yeah, you, you could telegram. Actually, might you be could a telegram. Actually steal a telegram. 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 <laughs> get hit with a pigeon by him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, you're looking for my. Biz, um, uh, have a look for Cherry Sheriff and you'll find it. It's on Facebook and it's on Instagram and everything else. Yes, that's quite a revealing outfit, isn't right? It? So, the point of I'm that, I'm sure you've drawn was, that a little bit smaller than, than it actually was in the movie, you know. Yeah, she's actually quite tall, mm. she's not that big. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so, so, I always love that scene, I always love the light in that scene when they're on the sail barge, etc. And Jabba's always been up there as I, I want to draw Jabba, but. As a kid, I, I never found Princess Leia attractive same, in any way. It, didn't, same. it wasn't on my radar because I was seven or whatever it was. Yeah. So Leia was just another 3PO or Chewie or R2. She was part of the gang. Yeah. And so I never I never really clocked with the objectifying of her. I, I get it as, you know, as, a, as a man with a brain. I get why you know, you've got there in the end. But I never wanted to draw her for those guys that wanted that. I wanted to draw her and I wanted her to be... You know, I want the girl to buy it because I want her to think Princess Leia's a badass in that scene, which she mm. is. So I was waiting for that sort of, the reasoning behind it. And then when she passed away, Carrie Fisher passed away, the load of interviews were coming out that they were reprinting everywhere. And one of them was after she'd just made Jedi. And um, a journalist asks her something along the lines of, what, you spend half of this film in the knack almost, you know, um, what are you going to tell your teenage daughter when the time comes to talk to her about your career and that she said well i'm gonna tell her that i was kidnapped by a giant space slug and i strangled the fattest neck in the galaxy with my bare hands mm. i thought well that's that's what i was after so i wanted it to be that shot of nobody else could get to him in star wars you know and he'd been going for how many hundred years or whatever mm. and she's managed to throw a chain around his neck and strangle that neck so i also found out as i spoke to you about um in some of the expanded novels she was actually referred to as the hut slayer at one point and mm -hmm. I thought, well okay that's 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 the nail in the coffin there that's that's her looking badass so I, I wanted to make her look like she's saying all right he's done who's next you know so it was never about uh, yeah obviously it's a exploitative costume but it was never about that for me when i was watching star wars as a kid she was princess leia you know mm. and with the explanation that absolutely nails the picture it's brilliant I should go for myself now. Well, and I, I, I noted as well. Hey, you still can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only twenty-eight pounds plus that. <laughs> um, but but I, I, when you get to talk to people who buy your stuff, art should stand on its own and should have like somebody. Sorry, art should have somebody like you don't need to explain it. You know, mm -hmm. we know that's a stormtrooper. That's that's my version of what Luke thinks he's like inside his head. But it's always kind of fun to ask, where did that come from? 
Mm. And when I do the cons, the reason I keep doing them is that you get to tell people that. You get to sit with the kid who's going to put it on his wall and you get to tell him why the Millennium Falcon's such a good chip and why he wanted to draw it. Because, yeah. again, my mantra is it's got to be something I'd put on my wall. And all of this gets run through my son, my wife, the postman, anyone who's going to listen, even if they don't like Star Wars, is that a nice piece of art? You know, Is it going to sit well in someone's room or something? And it's fun to talk to people about it. So when this, when I did this one, I was very pleased uh, that the vast majority of people buying it were girls and women. So that was the idea behind it. I didn't want to be drawing it for the guy who just wants to see Princess Leia's bum mm. or the side of it. Um, yeah, it was. It was never done to be that, really. Um, yeah, that's that's good. Shame on them people who were buying stuff <laughs> like that. Shame on them. I know that they're, and I know that. I mean, each to their own. I mean, the erotic industry is a thing in itself, and and people are having fun. Let them have fun. It's just not what I'm drawing. That's all. Um, I'm coming from a different perspective, mm. and and it's it's been sort of like informed a bit by me time at the table you know because it's been like about eight or nine years i've been doing it now um you get to see how many choices little girls have as something to cosplay as or you know the little black boy who wants to have a costume that he can wear and black panther come along and there's this explosion of like kids who can dress up as someone who looks like them you're suddenly like this is great this i should be doing something for him too or for that little girl who wants to dress as this so the choices of what a little dude can like aspire to and look up to is infinite but it's different with girls and it's it's different with like people who might look different to that little lad and you start feeling for him you start thinking all right well see if she's only got princess leah and this and that maybe i should be covering what she might want to see and what she might want to have on her wall and one of the ones that keeps coming back is uh did one of uh, she ra yeah. um and uh, that like, flew off the shelves when I first did it because all these women my age were going oh, I loved Chira when I was a kid and I'm thinking well I should be thinking like you you know a good but anybody who's any good at business should be thinking like well there's a market for that let's, yeah. let's go and get something ready for those people you know? Evil Lynn Evil Lynn <laughs> Evil Lynn that's yeah. I think someone said the other day online that she has the bluest eyes in all of the history of cinema is it if it is the same woman who played Diana out of V, I think it is. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, the one who played the Evil Lane. Yeah, that's a film, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, striking, <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, but there's usually a tale behind everything I've drawn because it's not just a matter of somebody saying, "Hey, Dave, go and draw the Joker." Um, it's usually I want I want to draw yeah. the Joker, yeah. and the Joker was one. You just mentioned that. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. In here, but uh, that, that, and that was probably the thing that's taken me the longest time to draw. Sitting and drawing it took a couple of days. Mm. But coming up with an idea that you think nobody's done before is a, is a bit of a process. Because yeah. it's thumbnail sketches while you're on a bus or it's like you know writing something down on your phone when you think about it. And then going having a look to see if someone else has done it. And I've got a, I've got a bit of a thing about I want somebody to see something I've drawn and know that it's one of mine. And maybe not know at first, but be pleasantly surprised to know that it's mine because I'm trying to go out of my way to draw something nobody's drawn before. There's there's a lot of artists who will draw Boba Fett as he's landing on the skiff in Jedi because that's one of the main publicity photos from the film. So it's readily available. There's loads of detail in it and it's very easy to get it and go, I'm going to draw that. But I want Boba Fett to look like you know, an old uh, 70s Western. Yeah, yeah spaghetti mm. Western. Yeah. yeah, spaghetti Western. I want, I want, you know, Han Solo shoots a dude in the nuts under a table in a bar. Mm. It's Star Wars is a Western. So I wanted to sort of invoke that. So I, as I say, walk around the house with the Nerf gun, yeah. take the pictures that look cowboyish, and then start to look at the mm. reference and, and, and build that in and stuff. But it all starts with the circles of where the body joints are yeah. and then the skeleton and then sort of like build it up that way especially like the um the three snow speeders you've got the side on picture oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, the way you explained it being like imagining three spit spitfires going on well yeah, it, yeah that came from um uh my granddad you know uh and anybody of that age would often have like pictures of lancaster bombers and spitfires over the fireplace mm. you know a, a pilot and his 
overall sipping a cup of tea or leaning on the plane and stuff like that and i kind of like that mm. that insight into the world we like so much the star wars world because as much as we see the action in the films i love the fact that when we got the toys as kids we could go off and and play like oh let's park up the tie fighters in the hangar for a week mm. and that would be as fun as like what's going on in the storylines so i kind of like seeing all these guys doing their job or just doing the patrol and stuff and the idea of that one was the way before vader turns up outside knocking on the door of hoth yeah. um i thought well those guys must have been there a while and they must have been doing their their rounds and checking and stuff like that so mm. it's just like one morning and the sun's coming up and they're, they're bombing along on the, yeah. the snow speeders you know um again i think ian mckaig nailed it like you've got to do something with the pose of of things that says something about them yeah. you know and as as much as it applies to people and figures i think it applies to the ships too as well because mm. my, my the favorite thing i've drawn is is my current falcon piece which could, the, the one in the hangar yeah yeah, yeah. um I was saying that the, the, the above view one's brilliant as well yeah doing, well the, the one the one with the hangar just coming in you've got the yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and, and, so. and it's and it, because of its simplicity really we all know it's a beautiful ship. We all know it's it's, it's fun to look at whenever you see it, um, and I, and I want it to be a, the thing that when somebody's bought it, they come downstairs and they see it in the morning, and they're not going to get tired of it. Mm. So it's finding a pose for it that isn't all slam bang action and stuff. It's something a bit subtle and it's going to sit in your house nicely. And the the Falcons, I think, my favourite character in in all of Star Wars. So, you know. You're still looking, letting me talk. You need to pull the ripcord. <laughs> pull the ripcord when it gets. It's, it's interesting when you start talking about one of the pictures. It draws you right in. You should. Should that, that could be the next living. one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> should start reading stories at cons as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm all for like suggestions as well. I've done a few ones based on. I've been trying to think of something, but somebody suggested something, and it's took me brain in a different direction. Mm. Um, you do get periods of. I, I don't know what to draw next. You know, I, I know for a good while in the beginning of my career, and a lot of artists still do it. They look at what guests are going to be at a show, and they'll draw something that's based around what who that guest is, or yeah. what mm. the, the show they're in, or the movie they're in. And I realised that's just knackering, yeah. because it's impossible almost yeah. to keep up, especially when you do shows like Telford, where there's like 300 guests. Mm. You think, well, am I really going to sell enough of these to justify me doing 18 new pictures? You know. Yeah. So I, I decided a long time ago I I draw the stuff I want to put on my wall, and it, yeah yeah yeah. You just you just hope that there's people out there who are into the same thing, you know. So people need to get on your website and have a look because I was I was on it last night looking at all the pictures and I thought I wish I could just buy them all. I wish I had a big enough house just to have a wall coated in them because well I'd it works for art. I always you. suggest the same even, thing. Even the, to, just the little ink ones, the little ink prints yeah. you've done there. That I classic. always suggest the same thing to everybody. Just move. Get a bigger house. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we tell so, people that are in Stormtrooper <laughs> Amazon Busts. Do you only sell prints or do you sell any of the original drawings? These, all or these are digital. I draw digitally mainly. Um, I do draw traditionally because that's how I was trained and a lot of those black and white ones yes. uh, like they're at the back of the book here the, the ink sketches I think it's I think it is on the website yeah, yeah. The, the, this, this type of thing um, I'll draw those hold on I draw those as like A4 things with ink and with markers and stuff like that dark crystal was it upside, yeah. upside down yeah yeah that's sketches yeah, yeah. Um, if you can name everything in the book you can have something for free oh, you shouldn't have said that to me I made four of them up <laughs> I know, but I'll still name it. <laughs> Somebody did. I tried. I used to try that at the table, and then some guy said, "Has this fun thing not got a name?" I went, "No." He went, "Then I christened him Andrew." I said, "Now I get him." He always reminded me of Larky. <laughs> Who Emil? Is that the last starfighter? I can't it remember. Is, yeah. yeah, yeah, the gun yeah. star. Yeah, that and Valley of Guanji, absolutely ripe for a remake. Definitely. Everything works in the films, but if you update them effects, oh, but. Mm. but so yeah, um, <laughs> well. <laughs> So I draw this stuff traditionally, and then I'll scan them in and get this. But a lot of the stuff that I do, like the thing. the yep. bigger colour stuff, um, that's like twenty five years of Photoshop that I can't ignore. Really, I'm, I'm faster drawing on my big tablet setup at home than I am just traditionally. So I just get on with it because yeah. I worked in the games industry for years, and 
graphic design and all that stuff and I always insisted on having a tablet instead of a mouse so it, it just made it second nature really mm. um, but it, it means that there is no original art with a lot of these ones I can still do original art and I quite fancy it actually just sitting down and do, getting a, an oil painting out or something um, it's, it's you have to pay for materials mm. yeah. so be a bit of efficiency in your process I think but yeah it's still possible to do that stuff um, kind of miss it as well actually kind of, mm. that's me first they were the first ones I drew ah um, Optimus and Megatron yeah yeah just chilling out stirring each other out 80s style yeah so I had the, when I first went to sell them uh, all these people stood at my table and this hand comes over all of them this fella's just got some money in his hands and he went them two framed I went, uh, right, okay, um, do you want it? And I was trying to, I was hoping I could explain the work to him. He went, no, no, them two framed, on them. And I think he thought they were the only two I had. Yeah. You know, I hadn't got like a load behind me under the desk or whatever. But um, so he buys them and then he came back the next day to the second day of the show. I said, um, I said you, you've put them up? He said, yes, yeah. I said, uh, where have they gone? He said, uh, uh, they've gone over the over the bed. I said, all right, that's nice. I said, uh, live alone like said, no. <laughs> right. so who's got the Decepticon side he went straight over the wife <laughs> <laughs> nice nice work <laughs> brilliant honestly you meet them all I mean you'll know having a stall and meeting the public mm. I think the best training I ever had was nine years in a Saturday job where you meet the, anyone who comes in I, I, I will be making my son get a job where he faces the public at some point because it's the best training you could have for any job because any every job is dealing with people in it i i love meeting people yeah and if you if you've worked in a shop or a pub or something i wouldn't do it i'd never do it i wouldn't do it now i wouldn't i'd never no, do it again no i could never but have it, was, it. it was the basic training for everything i've done since no it's, it's just a bad it, idea that <laughs> is it not, not for you that no <laughs> people are on the no list I, i'm i'm just going well, <laughs> you got i just Imagine, imagine you're like working in shop, yeah? Yeah. Shoe shop, whatever it is. Yeah? Yeah. People know you're going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah? You don't yeah. want like, what, an ex-girlfriend all irate turning up, do you? And like, oh, wow. and wait, you can't even like run away. <laughs> Just have to fight her in the shop, publicly. Yeah. That's no good. I can see why. <laughs> well, <Sorry>. no, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I th I think it gave me the basis for everything I learned. Because like even even now, like nothing's going to compare to the old fellow who pooed in the changing room, just <laughs> and then wanted to show me, you know. Rob, <laughs> wait a minute. I think there needs to be more of this this story. Oh, that's just one of them. I had a fella come in once. BHS I used to work in, so. I, Oh, the old market. Yeah, yeah, the olden days of like. Um, what you trousers. say, old market? It wasn't Debenhams, was it? No. So, no. hosh bloke um, yeah. shat in the <laughs> changing room. Well, he was dressed all in green, and um, I thought he was a leprechaun at first. <laughs> I sort of imagined him, but he came in and gave us a wink and said, Watch out for the gangsters. I said, What? He said, They'll shit on your doorstep. I said, What? <laughs> so, in he goes, leaves us a present, and then somebody had to pick it up later on. I just made myself scarce. But, <laughs> but we had a fella come in once. You didn't even pick it up? No, I, I put my thumb in it. But yeah. So some, <laughs> somebody actually came in to the <laughs> stores? Yeah, spoon in hand. Wait a second. <laughs> where? where <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Did anyone do the Grouch Hill Brothers? <laughs> where, where, they they leprechaun? <laughs> where they a leprechaun or was it like a homeless or something? Never found out. I, I don't think he was a homeless. He was very clean. Um... Not that a homeless yeah, can't that, be clean. Yeah, but, not, um, not he, that he not the just, tramps are dirty. No. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but he was just one of many tests. Like a, a, a fella came in when I worked on the lighting department. So you, you can do that? You can just go in like changing room somewhere you, and just take a dump? You, you can do anything, <laughs> whether there's any consequences. Wow. Isn't, isn't <laughs> it's amazing. Probably get, probably get arrested for it these it's days. Amazing. Do you yeah. think? Yeah. yeah. Well, it all depends how fast you are. <laughs> why would you? Why? There's no cameras in there. Is there cameras in there? No cameras there wasn't in there. There, there, there wasn't there. Some of the videos yeah, there I've seen be. on porn there there's loads of cameras in <laughs> changing rooms. Yeah, and Airbnb, there, there, there Airbnb and stuff. That, that's different. That's different. <laughs> I'm sure that's My different. Own. It doesn't compute. Yeah. <laughs> 
So a fella comes in and said, um, why didn't I get me 10% off my bulbs when I just bought bulbs off you five minutes ago? I said, we don't have any 10% off our bulbs, sir. He said, yes, you do. <laughs> and you know when he he knows as a fact <laughs> so he's just he's telling me a fact you do have 10% off your bulbs I said we don't sir I'm sorry mm. he said I've just seen the sign I said tell me where the sign is he said it's over the road in Debenhams <laughs> I said you just said the name of the shop the other shop <laughs> and it didn't even click with him he's seen a sign in another shop so it applies to the shops <laughs> all of the shops <laughs> did, did he have a twitch as well <laughs> <laughs> You oh used to tell God. when you see him coming in. When they... I, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've, so you... I've unfortunately got a quick story that involves me being that customer. No, no, no. That I'm not known for my DIY You're skills. You're always that customer. And I'm very, yes. very rarely involved in purchasing of anything for said DIY projects. And several years ago, there was a um, screw fix just up the bypass from my house, five minutes away. And I did something, went on the website, looked for it, didn't think to do the whole, you know, or the num um, product kit code or anything, rolled up the screw fix, went in and asked at the till for it and they said, oh, we don't have any. I was like, I've just checked the stock on your website five minutes ago. No, we don't. We don't have anything. So I was fuming. Anyway, months, whatever passes, same situation, need something, goes on screw fix's website, looks in stock at your local screw fix, two miles away, whatever it is, rocks up, same thing happens. They haven't got it in stock. I'm like, I've, I've this is the second time it's happened to me. Your website's absolutely dog shit. <laughs> complained at them the third it's time it happened technology. i was going into tool station i wasn't going into screw fix and the, cha, cha, cha. I'd, so I'd, I'd check screw fix's website for everything i need and they probably did have it but i was going <gasps> to the wrong store completely because <laughs> to a non-diy person like me or somebody who doesn't look at shop signs it's all the same place isn't the same. It? So, yeah so i've been given some poor till worker and <laughs> tool station grief for for my own stupidity <laughs> So oh, I, can, I can relate to that man wanting yeah, 10% yeah, yeah. off from you. And that's like <laughs> my, my schoolmate, Julie McHugh, I haven't seen for years, and I'm on the bus and she's saying, oh, I was in our price before, and I said, uh, I asked the girl about this tune I'd heard in, in Ibiza, and I didn't know what it was, and she's saying, it's, it starts with ding, 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 all these pianos and that, and it goes into this big beat comes in, and then this singing comes in, it's like, ah, and she's going, she's taking me through the song as well, and she's saying, and the pianos come back in, and, 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 and the girl says, I don't work here, love. <laughs> <laughs> shops, you see, I think the, the basis of all life is in shops. Once you do that, you can get on with it. The future generation, you know, hopefully your lad won't have to because the high street will be dead. Yeah, he'll just be working on the internet like yeah. every other kid. Dave, when that guy did a poo in the changing room, <laughs> <laughs> how did he wipe? I didn't ask him. He, he was out. There's curtains there. We didn't yeah. actually discover it until. Not all of them have curtains. No. Well, hold on, there's pr definitely privacy. <laughs> They're not open. Oh, yeah, it's definitely privacy, yeah. Yeah, but what did he use? Um, oh, uh, was, he trying, was he some, trying some clothes on? It was a pair of underpants. <laughs> yeah, he did it in a I pair don't of think underpants. You, you can't try underpants on in... There was oh, a, a hit, I presume, uh, it's I hit, he took wait, his own underpants off. Like yeah, we, <laughs> we, we were sort of like, what year was that? Christ, I don't know, like 1990 or something like that. So before people realised it was probably a dirty idea to try on underpants in a shop... Because I did notice as time You used on. to be able to try on underpants. Hold on, yeah. so they weren't his underpants? Oh, no. Oh, so yeah, I, I didn't say that he'd shit himself and took them off in the changing room. No, he'd taken the pair of uh, undergrugs into the changing room. Well, women's, women's do it. They have, a, they have a weird plastic patch in them, doesn't yeah, it? So yeah, they, that, it doesn't touch the in. fanny. What? In, no, yeah. What? Isn't that just the bikinis? Yeah. Not that, no. <laughs> no, no, it's... Um, Why would you have to try underpants on? See if they fit. Yeah, that <laughs> You know that yes, no. <laughs> Do they fit? <laughs> they don't fit. Some people don't know. Rob's mum still buys his underpants, a pack of five from Tesco's. <laughs> Electric blue, all of them. <laughs> XX. Has anyone got any, what, any of them ones that make noises? I've got uh, underpants that are so old that um, as you stretch them to put them on, they go. Because <laughs> <laughs> all the elastic's giving up. And the wife's like, you should, you should buy some more. Not getting rid of these Batman ones. <laughs> Can we not repurpose them? We put a drawstring on them. So you get the choice. <laughs> you get the choice. Mine just disappear when they get like oh, that. They? Yeah. <laughs> just gone. I wish mine would, to be honest. No, it just wears them till they... Till the, <laughs> till the <laughs> dawn. <laughs> he goes to bed in them one night and he wakes up and they're gone. He thinks that Andrew's took them off, but he's just dissolved. <laughs> <laughs> it's become gas. Imploded. <laughs> 
What are we talking about? Yeah. Okay, this is the, this no, is, no, my mind has been blown <laughs> by the, by I've, the, by I've the got, fitting romantics. I've got no oh. idea, apart from RS chats with artist David Kennedy. Had no, no, no. Sino- you know, oh, right, okay. Synopsis I need, I need one of these. The I need one of this, these. Uh, I've not seen this. I've just seen it. I need, All right. it. need one of them. Okay, we'll sort That's that out. mega. We'll sort that out. That's absolutely mega. That's how, one of my favourite. How big? Because um, the, the poster that I got oh, for CC. Well, because I draw all these digitally, oh. technically they could be any size you want, really. Um, but, uh, yeah, it might cost a bit more because it'd be a one-off, you know what I mean? If, if I buy a batch of them... Do you do, do you do standard sizes? Yeah, I mean, make it whatever size you want it to be. So you want it for that wall, <coughs> and make it for that wall. Look at that, that's amazing. <clears throat> See, this for me is the graphic side of it. That's what appeals to me. mm, mm. I really like that. I mean, uh, there are some artists out there that draw, will will draw something. It looks like a photograph. And yeah, I, th- yeah. I think there's a camera for that. Yeah. Why, why wasting your life? The thing is, you've got to you've got to make. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> you've got That's... you've got to make that type of stuff. There are people who who do draw from photos and they make it sing. They absolutely, you know, Drew Struzan being yeah, one of them. Yeah, but photos. But he, he can t- like add light into that. That would just make it incredible you know I know plenty of artists who will use direct reference but they will use it I've just told you I've got a problem you're not going to convince me no I'm not going <laughs> to but, uh, but I, I, my my thing is I, I, I kind of like to draw stuff I haven't seen yeah so, exactly uh, that's it and that's fresh isn't it it's so to use an example then so that's Kaneda's bike from Akira mm-hmm. um, which is one of my favourite films um, and art wise the guy who drew Akira and the comic is one of my heroes Katsuhiro Otomo um, he's just insanely good so he's thought up this incredible bike design um, and what I tend to do is um, whether it be Lego or um, bits of things that are toys or whatever I, I tend to just put them together and hold them together and move it around so I can see what the pose is, what pose is going to work you know what mm. I mean I want his bike to look strong fast and super cool right if i'm not going to get that if i do a top down shot of it right i'm not necessarily going to get that if uh, i draw the character in a particular way um but i want him to look like laid back as cool as he's going to get and i want the bike to look cool as well so you get that emphasis by sorry tapping the mic there i tend to close one eye and, and move this thing around until something clicks and then once I've got that, I'll draw the basics of the shapes where they are and then start going into it and working on it. Um, so there's a lot of research involved in finding out what bits are on that bike and stuff like that. Um, but the fun comes from the fact that you're pretty much guaranteed nobody's drawn it like that before. You might get something similar. Or uh, In fact, weirdly, I did this just as a bit of fan art, um, the poster for Prey, the um, Predator movie that came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and the guys who actually did the poster the film got in touch on Twitter and said our original designs were quite close to that and I thought artists do think in similar ways yeah. you know mm. it, it, it's not impossible for you to come up with an idea and somebody else is doing it exactly the same time you know, Hollywood's been doing it for years with volcano films and everything meteor films and stuff they all seem to come out at the same time it just, mm. just happens sometimes but <clears throat> the more I try and push it to be the thing that's in my head the more I know it's probably not there's, there isn't somebody else copying it out there, you know. And if they are, I could probably spot them. So, mm. it takes all sorts, the art world, because there are people who will make a living off just tracing a photo, and if somebody wants to buy it, then fine, go for it. Um, it's just not for me. It's just, I want to do something else, so. Mm. I recently, um, someone messaged me on Instagram. I've got like, a barbecue account. And they were offering like logos, and I've had an, uh, I had a logo drawn years ago by a mate, and the principal was I wanted it to be something that I would have tattooed on myself. Okay, yeah. And it, he, he nailed it. He was a, an yeah. apprentice tattoo artist. It was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this, then I've had this thing in my head that I wanted. Like my daughter started sketching on an iPad a few years back, so I paid her, commissioned yeah. her to draw yeah. a picture of me based on photographs and me having this big dirty burger. Yeah. Anyway, she did a drawing. It was dog shit. Right. <laughs> And I gave her feedback, and she spat a dummy, took me tenner, and I never got me drawing. You paid her a tenner? What do you expect? Well, she, she, at the time, she was like nine years old. It's a fortune to me. Um, but anyway, recently someone contacted me with these, like, I'd call them, like, they look like the side of a f- funfair 
you know, that old school. Oh, yeah, graphic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. And I was like, oh, I quite like that idea. That, like, quite, it's a bit cheesy, but <laughs> and I, and I, I sent him stuff to reference it. And then what he sent me, I think I paid 50 quid for it because it was an American. Yeah. I'm sure it wasn't American, but he wanted to pay it in dollars and it translated to like 50 quid. Yeah. And it was fucking awful. And like, right. he, he basically drew round different yeah. pictures of me, but then stitched it together. <sighs> yeah. And yeah. like, used I've big, thick black lines for my teeth. Like, and I. I look like a, a some kind of deformed pirate trying to eat a, a burger. That, Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but the burger as well. The burger was just floating. On, I have to try and find it. But the burger was like just floating on the side of the oh, image. Was like I don't even know what it is. And then like, and I'm convinced that the pictures he was using weren't his for a start. Yeah. Because the detail, like he, he drawn other people with beards, this and man was like, "This is the problem with photos, right? Unless you use the actual photo." Your your variation of the, of you trying to copy a photo, human eyes pick it up. Yeah, it's why I'd never have a portrait of someone tattooed on me. No, I, because I don't know. you see them even when you don't know the person. You go, oh, that doesn't look quite yeah, right. Not, there's, not quite there's, right. There's something. It's like your reference, Rob, of someone saying they can make a sculpture that looks exactly like someone until you see it next to the person. You go, well, that's yeah, not, it's not not yeah. the same. We we need to get Clarky drunk and then get a portrait tattooed <laughs> on him. <laughs> I don't need have to be his, drunk. Have his face tattooed yeah. on his face. <laughs> be, no, face. That's fine. If it's have Paul, your face tattooed on his ass. <laughs> that's fine. I'd do that because it's not, you know, it's not like one of my daughters. Yeah, and it's going to be funny. Yeah. Every time you but get I your ass get... out, someone would be like, why have you got Rasputin and the Mad Monk? <laughs> <laughs> Good lo- a better looking version, of course. <laughs> Russia's greatest but that's, machine. That's Rasputin's like, better looking. <laughs> but that's, that, for me, that's the... What I love about art, uh, where you, like you're taking your stance on it, say I'm making it my own. Like yeah. when I was a kid, like my parents or anyone would be like, you, "You're good at art," and I can sketch something. I'd be like, "That's quite good," and I'm like, "It's dog shit because it doesn't no. look like what's in my head." <clears throat> yeah, but the, and it, it might look like what they think it should look like because it's not what's up here. Yeah, Con- like, controversial I'm, point with a lot of people I talk to it about, but I'm I don't really believe in talent. I believe in practice. Mm. And when you go and talk to kids in a school and you talk to them about drawing a dinosaur or something if you were to ask everyone in that classroom draw me i don't know captain america right they're all gonna draw it from what they think it looks like now their hands might not be trained enough to know what anatomy is and do whatever but one of those kids will have an idea you'll have never thought of yeah right and you can learn you can teach your hands to catch up it might take years Mm. but you can practice and you can get better the thing you can't get better at is the idea and I don't know why people take shortcuts on that. It's like AI. Why would somebody invent a technology that takes the, the fun jobs? <laughs> you know what I mean? When, tr- teach it to get crisp bags off the road. Don't teach it to do the stuff we like doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I don't get why. That's, that's where my stance comes from. If somebody's just copying a photograph. Where's the bit of you in it? Where's the bit that makes that picture yours? Unless you do like Drew Struzan does and you make it sing and you add all these elements to it, I've got more time for the kid who doesn't know what a hand looks like, who, who's passionate about the thing he's doing, than the person who's, who's copied a thing because they're going to sell it. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but it takes all sorts, as I say. Don't let me get on that soapbox. That's about, I, like, I really like that as a link anyway to talk about whatever this potential collaboration is. Let's tease so, to it. Let's, let's well, we can, it. yeah, we, we, can, we can tease about it. Obviously, we're, we're spending some time together now, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. Um, Paul sat a bit too close, probably for your own oh, comfort. God, but apologies for that. I don't, um, I don't, but we are... I just take, though, don't I? <laughs> so. Well, we love Dave's work, don't we? And oh, yeah. if we can think of a way that we might do something together yeah mm. i thought the same thing that I mean, would be good but speaking to yourself all at the um, fun day mm-hmm. um you know i see it's nice to work i think with people who, who are good at what they're doing you know and the the probably but you'd still consider us yeah yeah um you're on the list <laughs> <About eight>. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like working with people who are, who are good at what they're doing and they're, and they're keen on getting better at it and I, I've got stuff in there from I don't know seven or eight years ago and it might look dross to me but somebody likes it somewhere but what I do like doing is getting better and pushing myself a bit and, and trying a challenge of some kind and I've no idea how my artwork might fit with your stuff I mean there's I guess there's stuff out there you know your sideshow stuff and things like that where you might buy a statue and you might get a 
a limited print with it. Mm. Um, and I like that idea. You know, mm. even if it's like, um, I'll do a, a pencil sketch and, and say 200 people buy something off you guys, one of them's going to get this sketch or whatever it is. Um, I just like the idea of working with like-minded people, if that yeah, makes be sense. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool, mm. wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. We'll have to think of something special. The only thing I'm a bit wary <coughs> of is, am I going to get any jip if I get something wrong on a helmet? Uh, yes, <laughs> a lot, and it will be from the people in the studio before from oh, the general public. I imagine public. so. Yes, I imagine so. Yeah, but that's but that's part of the fun because. Uh, well, I don't. Well, the, the, see, I don't. I, it's art, so yeah. But I, well, I'm, I'm all for stylizing stuff. Yeah. When we, yeah, but the, this the thing stylizing it's one thing, but let's think about when we. I think it, we, it was on camera when we were talking to Piero. What are you doing? Hmm? That camera's still recording, even yeah, though this one's on me. I'm listening to you. Is it blowing kisses? <laughs> hey, look at him. Um, so there's uh, a tattoo artist. He's a yeah. licensed Lucas tattoo artist called That's Piero Twin Tat. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah. Piero Tatwin. All right. Okay. Um, and he was saying that when someone comes to me, specialises in like all kinds of well, Star Wars baseball graphic yeah, yeah. interpretations, and when someone comes to him with a concept, he's like, yeah, but let's make the blaster accurate. Yeah, Let's yeah. Make, even though it's a graphic representation and the proportions yeah. might be off in it, yeah. he's like he wants that blaster to be as accurate as possible. Yeah, yeah, he wants yeah. the helmet to. So I think like the graphic interpretation of it, I totally understand. But if it's if the blaster's not going to look right, yeah, it's. it's, it's I, I think it's uh, the idea would be well in my head. I, I'd like to see like you have got something of yours on display. If one of your helmets is here and there's a I'd, piece I'd of art, I'd actually like to see you um, walk, walking around the house. We're wearing it and getting the getting the pose. Idea for yeah, I can get you the pictures. We like to see. Well, you can. You'll, you'll probably get it while he's outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah but through I, the letterbox. <laughs> 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 but I like the idea of it complementing what you do, not yeah. competing with it, not mm. being a separate thing that comes that you could then sell off if you wanted to. It'd be nice if if somebody because I've seen people before. I've they often put my Falcon piece behind their big Lego Falcon that they've spent. You know, yeah, once yeah. wage on or something like that, and I kind of like that. That's it's going to sit with something. They can put it up. They don't need to put it up. They can do what they want with it. But if it complements what your work's doing, you know, then that'd be nice. Mm. Um, so we'll have to talk about that. Yeah, see what, sure. what's possible. I'm getting to the stage now where the last thing I sort of drew to sell as a print was a while back because I've been so busy with the comic work and stuff like that. Um, I'm getting that Star Wars itch at the minute. Mm. And I'm, I'm thinking what what would be next, and and what's the type of thing that I would buy if I saw my table, you know. Mm. Um, so I've got a couple of ideas, but it'd be interesting to see what you guys have got coming up, and seeing if we could tie something into that too. Mm. Got a couple of ideas. Got a couple of mm. ideas. Because I like the idea that it could, it could send people your way. You know, if I have something on my table just on display and say this is something that's going to be exclusive with you, these guys work and they're over there in the corner if you want to go and talk to them, you know. I kind of like the idea that you can tap into each other's yeah. audience in a way. Um, yeah, which is which is um, weird for us to consider because we, we, we kind of always, well, I always think everybody that's ever going to know anything about us knows about us yeah well i've discovered you the last <coughs> year or so you know so the, but, yeah we, but we do have new people yeah and um and then i always think well do, do they know you know because so we, we have people recommending us and mm. they, they've no idea what we're about and then yeah and it's only further down the line that you realize and you're like oh we, we need to reiterate what what we're doing and yeah because we think, oh, it's all it's all out there. We we talked about this yeah. ten years ago, so everybody knows mm. now. And it's like yeah. someone's only just getting into mm. this from see shop training again. <laughs> it's, got, it's it's uh, the person who comes in. Is, imagine they've been wiped. Get used the to night before. Yeah, they, they, they well, come in or they've been wiped know. in the fitting room. Yeah, but we don't we don't we don't we don't <laughs> Snickers. We never really think about that though, do we? We're not. It, I mean, it's it's something to bear in mind. I, I know that I repeat I mean, look, myself to some customers. Look look at our YouTube. I mean, it's not exactly marketing, is it? It's no. I think your YouTube doing does a very good job of yeah, but it's telling just, people what it's you do. Just, yeah, but that's that's we're we're good at talking about what we do, aren't we? Yeah. Um, we're just not good at explaining what we do. Yeah. And sometimes it can just be like a 
a little phrase or something that you put on your site or you you put on your Instagram description or something. This is what we do, you know, because uh, it just welcomes that yeah, new have person fun. who doesn't know what you do. Have fun. You know, my best, Keep it fun. My best advice I can give to anybody who's thinking of doing Comic Con work. Floss. Selling. Floss. Wipe. Uh, <laughs> it's don't talk to people about your product. Ask them how their day's going. Talk to them and ask them about what they're doing and, and what's your favourite thing you've seen today and, and what you're going to go and see later. Are you going to see any guests? Yeah. and and suddenly you're having a conversation over the top of the work yeah. you've got. And yeah. Yeah, but I've got a problem with this we now because, in. because you're obviously an educated man. Why? We're going to invest. And I'll ask them a question and then I'll be drifting off. Because <laughs> like, of my like, weird autism or something. <laughs> Well, the, cu- the customers the, where I do best is when people aren't talking to me and I'm just sanding and gluing and yeah. I love that. D- you deploy someone and then I read someone with a gob on them and, and then I re- flick them to the front. <laughs> and then and then I re- I'll read an email and I'll be like, I'll answer it in my head and then I won't answer it. <laughs> I do that, yeah. Yeah, but just, just to clarify as well, when Rob when Rob does deploy someone to do it, once you've done it, he turns around and goes, have you not done this? Did you not do yeah. this? <laughs> what about this bit? And you go... <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's not for this time, that's for next time. <laughs> it's for every time, unfortunately. <laughs> and Anna was only asking the question. But I every, wasn't suggesting that you should have done it. I you, said, did you do it? No, you'll do it. You go, right, can you go There's and do this? And I go, right, well, give me a brief on what you actually want to see with it. You go, oh, just get on with it. And I go, and I'll do, like, 99% of what he's doing, but it's that 1%. percent you go, well, you did, did you not get this shot? I'm like, no, you didn't tell me you wanted that shot. And you'll go... <laughs> <laughs> see, that laugh proves that I'm 100% right, and he knows he does it. <laughs> Bert Reynolds, the camera. Yeah, but I don't say we really should have got that shot. I'm really disappointed. You don't need to. The whole look is I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> That's what my mum said when I shaved my head the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wore a woolly hat for four days. She went, Are you going to take that off? Took, Bloody hell, she said. How old were you, though? Like 12. Oh, I can't remember. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was close. Yeah, well, mid twenties, mid twenties. Probably similar to when I I came back and got my first tattoo at the age of sixteen, and I'd, uh, I'd bandaged me right hand, bandaged me right hand up and borrowed me mate's driver's license. who was eighteen, and that way, if they asked me to sign something, the signatures wouldn't match because I had a broken <laughs> hand. And uh, I said to my mum, "What would you kick me out the house for?" And she was like, "Beating someone up for no good reason or getting someone pregnant." And I went, "What about a tattoo?" And she just stared at me and started crying. So I just got up and left and then oh. go home for three days. <laughs> <laughs> which t- which tattoo was it? Your potato? Oh no, it's long gone. It was. You love this. You must know this. There's no way I've, we've been friends as long as we have without me telling this. But my first tattoo was a Nike sign, Nike swoosh on right. my arm. Oh yeah, yeah. So class. Yeah, I thought. Well, I thought so at the time. Yeah. Yeah. All my mates thought it was a good idea. No, out of line. They all tried to tell me Tommy Knight <laughs> thought it was a great idea. You know what tattoo you should have? Portrait. A Paul. Let's do it. <laughs> right. Or well, what about a a drawing of Paul by David? Yes, yeah. And you'll get it tattooed? Yeah, why not? Oh, my God. Oh, I'm we on for that. You've got to do it bog-eyed or something. Well, he is anyway. It's accurate. Can I draw it with my left hand? <laughs> do it with your, I, I do it with your see, feet if you want. Now. Do it in a mirror. I'm, 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 I'm on the front of a boat. It's <laughs> 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 the idea of the tattoo. Shirt off. Stretched. Have you seen Rambo 2? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to draw it. So Paul identifies as six foot four and thirteen stone. That's how he wants to be seen in the, uh, ah, in the portrait. Don't we all? <laughs> don't we all? Oh God, yeah. I, I had to get something from behind the washing machine yesterday, and I went in and I got stuck. <laughs> and, uh, I've, seen, I've seen them films. I've seen them films. <laughs> <laughs> and then did Paul appear behind you? <laughs> I showed up with my wife and I said, everything's changed. <laughs> I said, what's happened? <laughs> You've done this to me. <laughs> well, on that bombshell, that's a perfect place to end. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, well, thanks for coming in and talking to hey, us. No problem at Matt, all. You've for, uh... blown my mind. Sorry. Not with about the, art. <laughs> with the fitting, the fitting room. <laughs> I just can't, I can't get over that. Oh, that yeah. That's an outrage. That's probably it's not even the worst a... that's happened in a shop, I imagine. I had a... How do people get brought up to do things like that? I don't. I don't people understand. don't. They get dragged up, as my mum would say. 
I don't understand. You get to a certain age and everything's a toilet, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. We've got that to look forward to, haven't we? Yeah. Everything's a dildo if you're brave enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Paul's not saying anything, is he? <laughs> I'm taking this <laughs> Paul's, got, Paul's got a friend and he used to sit on a bedpost. Oh my God. <laughs> and that friend's called. Oh, he's, oh one no. of, he's one of the directors at Paul, RS. Paul's is, it, got, is it Rob or is it Simon? Paul's got a friend who's got a friend. That's what I should have said. Uh? Paul's got a friend who's got a friend I've who used to sit on a of, yeah, yeah, yeah. bedpost. Ah, yes. And it's, it happens to be one of the directors at RS <laughs> Batmasters. I'll let you decide, guys. <laughs> but it's not me. <laughs> but it could be. <laughs> but it's not. So it can I share this, the yeah, link for this not. podcast with my church? Is that right? <laughs> 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 well, yeah. Yeah, because the, the, the version that goes out will be like five or six <laughs> minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please get one of me Burt Reynolds mugs to camera in. That'll, that'll make me day that. That's all the podcast's going to be. There's just going to be seven of them. <laughs> and then the one where you suggested I do it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Just, just keep dropping it in all the way through. <laughs> well, I think we're better quality day. Yeah. Uh, Paul's getting hungry. He's yeah. not not out for so, about so an hour did, and a half. So David did say at the beginning he brought something for. Oh yeah. God, yeah. Oh sorry. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. I'm hoping it's food. <laughs> well. Hey. Oh yeah. Is, uh, I, oh, are you gonna? You, I was gonna say you gonna do, one. Are you gonna do the Pringles yes. trick? The what? The Pringles trick. That's next thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I've had 14 in my mouth at once. <laughs> that, what, what year's old? <laughs> <laughs> Father Cronin, if you're listening, <laughs> it wasn't me. This time. <laughs> no, I, I was at my mates and... and uh, I got you. going to just... Uh, cheers. I thought you were going to go... Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I was at my mates and, and he's, he was bragging about one of his mates uh, putting 12 Pringles in his mouth and, and being able to chew them all and not choke. This sounds like the five pound story. Carry on. And then, uh, so I did 14. I know, but did you put them all in one at a time? 14? Or full stack? All at once, full stack. What, like that? Yeah, and I've done consider myself to have a big go. 14? Yeah. No, no. But it's a challenge you now, isn't it? You got for 14. How, 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 yeah, 14. how long was that? <laughs> how big? Clarky. Problem is, it's I reckon like... you could take your girth. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, Mum. <laughs> we'll see you at the next one. And I'll see you too, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I'll, um, yeah, I brought something. Uh, yeah. Is it an Ubu? Uh, <laughs> brought what? something that you I don't know, you, you can put it up in your studio. An or Ubu? You can... Are you talking about a taxi, Paul? <laughs> 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 Brilliant. Right. It's big. Signed, dated. Oh my gosh. One of a hundred. Some people have bought these. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Um, but I thought you might like it. I'm excited. Have oh. it's got the bottom? You can. <laughs> hey, he, he always says that. <laughs> I am going to stand up. That's all right. You can still hear me if I do. You've not been near the mic for the last half an hour. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> I'll just do uh, a running commentary. Right oh, yeah. oh. oh, this is going to Lab's house. Oh, look at that. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, that's mega. Oops. Is it all right? Nice. Right, okay. That's definitely going up in my See studio that, yeah. here. Yeah, that's nice. Right, <laughs> yeah. We're probably going to we're going to be fighting over this. No, we're not. It's going in here. Yeah. But what what I would like to say, Dave, is I've just put a pre-order in on the studio scale Merlin Models Slave 1. Oh, yeah. Mm, would that look good with that? No, nope, yeah, staying, staying in here. <laughs> that does look nice, that. That'll go with it. That's your little thing saying there's only 100 of them and that's what number it is. Uh, what is it, 50, 53? Yeah, right. um, I'll, get, I'll give you a shout about what, what's make a good frame and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. So people need to go to Cherry Sheriff's... Yeah, go to Asda.com and... Star. Oh, <laughs> cherrysheriff.com um, get in touch if you want I'm just sitting at my desk rotting away um, uh, yeah, waiting uh, for the inevitable end guys yeah. I tell you his, his work is spawn it's brilliant <laughs> Dude, me. the uh, Catholic upbringing doesn't allow me to go beyond two compliments <clears throat> after that you'll just be covered in ginger dust <laughs> and there'll be a pair of trousers <laughs> left on the, on the thing um, oh, but uh, thank you yeah um, yeah it's fun to do it um, 
It's hard work at times, but I'd highly recommend doing something you like. Yes, you so know, would I. Balls, mum. <laughs> <laughs> My mama. Wee. Well, like, well his, mom, his mom, she's... No, that's if you're hard-pressed. His mum's much younger than Rob's mum. Rob's mum's quick. Exciting, but quick. His mum takes... She'll, she'll keep going all night. Bert Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> It's descending but, uh, now. Yeah, it's descending. Got saxophone over that as well. Yeah, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brilliant. thanks for having me, chaps. Um, if you want me back at some point, yeah. free tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, just give us a shout if you want to bang on about something and concentrate on the subject. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Because we got there in the end, I think. Yeah, yeah these, but, guys, these guys are terrible for derailing things, Dave. Oh, well, I've, I've obviously not helped with starting with Carry On. Films, <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that was fun. Um, yeah, anytime you want me back. Yeah, it was good, and we'll uh, we'll sort out the the collaboration thing. Yeah, yeah, fun to be had. Thanks for joining us this time. Um, next time we'll try and make it a little bit longer. <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah, join us next time. We're not quite sure what's going to be happening, but. Um, if Paul's involved, it'll probably be a mum joke. Yeah, if Rob's involved, it'll probably be crying about a mum joke. And if anyone's got anything to swap, it's 01811-8095. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Excellent. Amazing. Dave, that was brilliant.